Kicking off the list at number five, the Landmark Inn. Located in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, right around Lake Superior, you'll find the Landmark Inn. Yeah, nice and cute and cozy. Come on in, take your coat off, stay a while. This fancy hotel was originally built in 1930 as a luxury accommodation for wealthy business owners from all around the United States. Sounds like a good time, let's gather, let's talk, let's talk shop around candles. These business owners would visit the Landmark to check on their business interests, all that good stuff. Though for its 100 years being open to guests, the hotel has had multiple reports of of, you guessed it, ghosts and paranormal activity. It's so common at the Landmark Inn that the ghost hunters and paranormal investigators, they make trips out to the hotel quite often just to check in and be like, hey, how's it going? And they put on their gadgets and they just check in on them. They can rely on them. The hotel's sixth floor is home to one of the saddest stories the hotel has ever seen. This story takes place in the 1930s when the hotel was a new, lively social and cultural center in town. The story revolves around a ship worker who fell in love with a local librarian and conducted their love affair in the lilac room. Yeah, of all places, of course, let's go meet the lilac room. Sounds beautiful. And that was where the man was staying. Perfect place to meet. The couple was said to have a planned wedding upon his return from the last voyage on the sometimes treacherous Lake Superior. Unfortunately, their love affair ended in tragedy when his ship met with a storm and sank to the bottom of a lake. He never returned to the shore and the librarian mourned the man in said lilac room, eventually dying herself of a broken heart. The heartbreaking story comes with many reports of the lilac room now being haunted. Yeah, rightfully so. As a large number of guests has reported hearing cries and whispers from a female. The female is also seen by many guests and workers on the sixth floor near the lilac room, crying and mourning for her loved one. A less romantic story that is associated with the hotel goes back to when it was even finished being built. During construction, a man ended the life of his girlfriend in due to anger and jealousy. And this took place right after she told him about her past boyfriends and their relationship history. Just normal stuff that he flipped out on, just a monster. And since the hotel was still being built to conceal the evidence, the man and buried her in the unfinished basement. Just horrible stuff. You knew I was going there and you're like, ah, oh, please don't. To this day, decades later, visitors and employees report hearing cries from that basement and some report hearing whispers from a female voice asking for them to find her body. I just got goosebumps. That's real goosebumps. No matter how much time goes by, these two women, heartbroken for different reasons, still haunt said hotel today. Number four, Michigan Bell Telephone Building. The Bell Telephone Building can be found in downtown Grand Rapids. It's known from the legend that the building is haunted by two ghosts. It's always two, eh? I always gotta have pairs. Good things come in pairs, even demons. These spirits have consistently caused chaos throughout the buildings for years in their own unique personal way. We love it, we love a unique ghost. The spirits that haunt the Bell Building are rumored to be Warren and Virginia Randall, a couple who used to reside in the Grand Rapids. Back in 1907, they moved from Detroit and bought the Judd White Mansion in Grand Rapids, which has now been torn down and built into what we now know as the Bell Telephone Building. So a lot of history there already. Over the years of living in this new house, Warren and Virginia's relationship started to crumble as Warren became very strange and paranoid almost, creating hardships in their relationship. In 1908, Virginia became tired of Warren's strange and aggressive behavior, so she decided, I'm out of here, peace. She left him. One night, three years after they were separated, Warren convinced Virginia into taking a car ride with them, you know, hoping to get back together, maybe talk it out. The two of them ended up at the Judd White House where their verbal disagreement turned horrible and Warren sadly took the life of Virginia. Then he proceeded to end his own life in the very same moment. The tragic accident that happened in the Judd White House became public knowledge and the house was left empty with no one wanting to occupy it. Yeah, more than fair. I'm like, what's rent? Also, what happened? No. The house remained abandoned for 10 years after the accident Accident until they finally just decided to tear the thing down completely. Thus, in 1924, they built the Bell Telephone Building on the ground, which still is in operation today. Yeah, they didn't tear that one down. That one's still going strong. Due to the horrifying scenes that happened on the grounds of the Bell Building, many claims that the spirits of Randall and Virginia still remain, haunting the new building. Some say that ghosts move into the new building and remain there to this day. I mean, I think that's possible. Ghosts like to move. They like to they can go through walls, they can probably relocate. Through the years of operation in the office building, visitors and employees all report being harassed by strange late night calls, which have been traced back to be coming from inside of the building itself. Yeah, inside the house, you guessed it, it's upstairs, that's so scary. Due to this and the strange eerie feelings that the employees feel while they're even working, it's safe to say Randall and Virginia may remain on the grounds, most likely, they're, they're definitely there. It sounds like they're there, they're for sure there. Number three on this list is Fort Fisher. Fort Fisher was a critical fort during the American 
American Civil War. It was used by the Confederate Army and was pretty instrumental for them from 1861 to 1865. This fort was used to protect an important trade post there that the army needed. They defended this place for those four years, but then in 1865, the Union Army came in and was finally able to capture it. This battle was a very bloody one and was actually huge for the Union Army in the overall scope of the war. Apparently, there was a lot of death at this fort, and that death. It's never really gone away. Now this fort is teeming with paranormal activity. Visitors will often report hearing gunshots coming from thin air. The sounds of many footsteps all running at once as if people were charging ahead. Orbs of energy appear in front of them from no apparent source. There are two very famous ghosts that haunt this place as well. Robert E. Harrell and General William Whitling. Robert was apparently an outcast who died under mysterious circumstances and has not been able to rest since. The General was actually taken prisoner and killed at Fort Columbus, but he returned to this place because he feels regret for how he failed in life. He was apparently responsible for defending this place and was not capable of doing so. A very haunted fort that I wouldn't recommend going to. Number two on this list is Lydia's Bridge. Who is Lydia and why does she have a bridge and why is it haunted? Well, Lydia is quite the famous ghost. This is a true ghost. Like when you think of a ghost and a ghost story, this meets all the criteria for a good one. Spectrum Local News says, People traveling between Jamestown and Greensboro on US Highway 70A said they've encountered the ghost of Lydia, a hitchhiker. If she's picked up, she gets into the car and vanishes before she reaches the requested destination. Various versions of the Lydia legend have been passed along over the years, and there are apparently 11 different versions of the story that are set in North North Carolina. It's common for folks to go ghost hunting for Lydia near the bridge. In the book Looking for Lydia, historians Michael Reniger and Amy Greer cite the 1923 death of Annie C. Johnson as the real life Lydia who died after a car flipped in 1920. That is a story with some history, man. Literally since the 1920s this has been going on and there are 11 different versions of the story. A story like this isn't just made up. It's not just something that one person posted on creepy pasta that became a thing. No, this has been part of the identity of North Carolina for a century. Countless people have picked up this woman and then had her disappear right before their very eyes. Car accidents have happened for people driving this woman and then getting so shocked that they spin off the road when she disappears. Lydia or Annie is a real ghost who stalks drivers along this road and especially this bridge. Although she isn't inherently evil in nature, as I said before, accidents have happened when people realize they were just driving a ghost around. I have no idea where Lydia is trying to get to, but trust me, you probably don't want to be the person to take her there. And finally, number one on this list is the Devil's Tramping Grounds. This is in reference to a very strange patch of soil in North Carolina. For decades, this circle of dirt has allowed nothing to grow on it at all whilst the area surrounding it is home to luscious wildlife. The Sun Journal says, regional legend maintains that Satan frequents the area on his nightly walks, pacing the circle as he contemplates his nefarious deeds. Normal vegetation surrounds the circle but only a wiry grass grows inside it and no plant life of any kind can be found on the path itself. Visitors have also claimed to see red glowing eyes in the circle. Now there could be any number of reasons for why nothing is growing on this patch of dirt. Simply because an area of land cannot grow wildlife doesn't automatically mean the devil himself has anything to do with it. But throw in the fact that there are two red glowing eyes there plus a few other creepy occurrences and we might just have something demonic afoot. Locals have reported putting objects in the center of the circle, then coming back a little while later and having those same items moved outside the circle. As if someone or something did this deliberately. The thinking is that this circle is a place used by the devil to dance or to perform rituals that we don't understand. Having things inside his circle of death doesn't make for a great dancing spot or sacrificial zone, so those things need to get moved. 
That's why we see the red eyes in the night and there's an overwhelming sensation of dread in the area. It's the devil doing his devilish things. A daring reporter actually decided to test this theory one evening and slept in the exact spot in a tent. He said that the entire evening he heard the distinct sounds of dancing footprints outside his tent but couldn't spot anything when he looked out. My dude literally could have been like one foot away from the actual devil. No idea how he managed to make it through the entire Entire night, but honestly, solid respect. Either way, this guy's story is an exception, not the norm. I'd avoid this place at all costs, because if you don't, the devil might actually make you pay for it. Number five on this list is the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center. Built in 1930, this beautiful theater has had many shows and screenings here over the years. For 55 years, it was in operation as one of the premier spots to have your movie shown, but in 1985, the theater shut down. It remained as such for about 20 years when in 2006, it began to get renovated. Now it's mainly just for live theater and other performance art in the city of El Paso. Like a lot of beautiful old theaters though, as Time passes, legends emerge, and this one in particular certainly has its fair share. The Plaza Theatre for Performance Arts Center has three primary ghostly apparitions at houses. The first is our very standard and very classic drifting woman in white. Looking sad and down on her luck, the spirit of this woman will often drift around through the rafters and has been seen by many workers throughout the years. The second is a man in all black who materializes in front of people. He's described a bit like a shadow creature, but slightly less menacing. I suppose if we have our woman in white, it's only fitting that we have a man in black to get a little bit of variety going. The third ghost sticks with the theme of spicing things up and is actually a little boy with a bouncing ball. It's not a basketball, but a small bouncy ball that the child seemingly plays with as he haunts the theater. Nobody knows the origin of these ghosts or how they got here at all. Are they connected? Maybe once a family unit who died here together, or are they all separate and have each suffered strange tragedies at this location over the century? El Paso, I'm sure, has some other theaters, and I'd stick to those ones if you're looking to watch some live shows if you're there. Number four on this list is Henley Row. Located on the Texan island of Galveston on the Gulf Coast, this is the most famous haunted spot for locals in the region. Texas Highways writes, It's not surprising that Henley Row is a hot spot for supernatural activity. Completed between 1855 and 1858 for shippers and cotton brokers, it was the town's tallest structure during the Civil War. The roof doubled as a Confederate lookout for Union ships. Galveston and nearby Barrier Islands, history had been laced with tragedy. It was the site of a bloody Civil War fight and serial epidemics of yellow fever decimated the populace. Hurricanes blast through regularly, the 1990 storm left up to 12,000 casualties in the worst natural disaster in US history. No wonder Texas writer Brian Woolley called Galveston an old cemetery with a beach attached. The resident ghosts of Henley Row represent aspects of Galveston history. There's the Confederate soldier seen on the roof and around the building. The bloodied teenage factory worker is a vestige of the building's cotton grading days. The lady in white and the running and playing little boy and little girl are thought to be 1900 storm victims. The upper floors house apartments and offices now, but Henley Market's glass ceiling reveals views of stairs and landings. During renovations, workers reported tools mysteriously moving around. Staff recall other spooky experiences as well. Some years ago, a friend gave her old photo of Dr. Wilbur from a house on Church Street that's always displayed in the shop. When Hurricane Ike inundated the building with 10 feet of water in 2008, the photo went undamaged while many other things were destroyed. Every year on November 1st, employees construct an elaborate Day of the Dead altar that includes the photo and lighted candles. Before closing, the staff follows a three-person backup routine to ensure the candles are completely extinguished, even dousing them with water. Yet almost every single year, one or more candles are burning the next morning. I can't imagine working at a place where we had to light candles for our ghost altar. Like that action alone would make me want to quit immediately. I I suppose the one good thing is that the ghosts here don't appear to be particularly evil or wanting to inflict harm. Still though, waking up and heading to work is already a tall task as it is, but knowing that there's a dead little boy and girl waiting there, yeah, that's a solid no-go for me. Number three on this list is Ochate. Ochate is actually an entire village and it's said that the whole village is haunted. 
This village is abandoned now, and maybe a big reason for that is because of how haunted it is. Don Quixote says why this village started to empty at the end of the 19th century is still not entirely clear, but illness, unfortunate weather, and a murder all had a role to play. During this time, there was sickness, especially the Spanish flu, which devastated the area in rain and hail that destroyed crops in successive years during the 1920s caused people to go search for a better place to live. In 1930, there remained only two families, one being a family of three and the other a single elderly man. Because a crazy pastor that frequented the village threatened pretty much everyone, the Aranguiz family decided to move to a safer village nearby. The elderly man, Yuzbeo, wasn't far behind. Their fears were later realized when the crazed shepherd brutally killed a fellow shepherd in one of the abandoned houses in Ochate in 1936. All of this has obviously left its mark on this abandoned village and now it's just a mess of ghostly and paranormal activity. A hotspot of spirits, demons, and beasts. In fact, and this is almost something else entirely, but there have been literal sightings of UFOs here before. That's a lot of stuff for one tiny village in Spain. I would recommend doing exactly how the locals did and avoiding this village at all costs. Number two on this list is the Thorax Hospital. The Thorax Hospital has definitely seen some horrible things over the years. The hospital, which is now abandoned and out of use, is located in Teresa. Back in its heyday, it was mainly used as a hospital for those sick with respiratory illnesses. All of the diseases varied, but if it had to do with your lungs, then it was likely that you ended up here. The hospital sadly boasted a very horrible statistic when it was operational. It seemed that an uncanny amount of individuals would take their own life if they got sent here. Many believe that due to the nature of the diseases that we're referring to, many people died a slow and painful death. This process often induced a sort of psychosis where the individuals would start to lose their mind a little bit before dying. Logical thought was very hard for these individuals to grasp, and even though it was a house of the sickly, it also turned into a house for the mad. This is why a lot of these individuals would take their own life. One of the biggest legends surrounding this spot is the jungle. Apparently, there is a garden in the middle of this hospital. Patients would go up to the ninth floor and they would either be thrown off or jump themselves to what was called the jungle down below or the garden. Obviously, the nine story fall was too much for their bodies to take and they would die. That's why people believe this garden to be the most haunted of all the spots in this hospital. A very dark and somber place in Spain that shouldn't be gone to. And finally, number one on this list is the Malaga Tunnels. Malaga is a beautiful province in Spain by the water. It's a very popular tourist attraction spot that has some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Underneath the fun in the sun, there are some deeply haunted tunnels though. Cycling Country writes, Tied to a grisly chapter in Malaga's history, when for 30 years a spate of young girls went missing in the area, some of their bodies were found near a river quite close to the Cortajo. Rumors soon abounded that underneath the building existed tunnels and torture chambers where these unfortunate women met their fate and with satanic rituals being performed. It also was a hospital and prison during the bloody civil war and quite possibly saw some executions and a lot of torment. The truth is, the tunnels did exist but have now been bricked up. The rest, well, you'll have to make up on your own mind whether this qualifies as one of the most haunted places in Spain. However, passing by this abandoned place sure is creepy. Disembodied voices, screams, lights, a sudden grip by a cold hand, and appearances in upstairs windows of people all add to the strangeness of this spot and have been witnessed by researchers in the paranormal fields. Unfortunately, this notoriety has caused a lot of damage due to thrill seekers trying to literally unearth the building's secrets. To add fire to these myths, in 2000 a film was made there using it as a backdrop. However, accidents, faulty sound, and battery problems plagued the production and it was never finished. For me, this is definitely one of the most haunted places in Spain. We're talking about torture chambers, satanic rituals, murder. This is a horrible place that has seen way too many tragedies and horrors to be anything but a haunted location. 
If you go to Malaga, stick to the fun in the sun and stay away from the tunnels and this haunted building. Going down there may just be the last thing that you do. Coming in at number five, we have Ozone Disco. What a name, I kinda wanna go. In March of 1996, a tragic accident happened in Q-Zone City's Ozone Disco. The local universities had just done their yearly graduation ceremonies. The students were looking to celebrate and there was a party being thrown for them at the disco. There were around 350 guests attending that night, even though the building had only been cleared to safely hold 35 people. Due to the large amount of people in such a small place, when the fire broke out, they did not stand much chance of escape. Tragically, around 200 people did not make it out that night. Not only did the fire consume the lives of many, but others were trampled in the chaos of trying to escape. The one fire exit the building had been blocked by the building next door, meaning the large amount of people who fled to it to escape became trapped. It was reported that when entering the building to look for survivors, the bodies were piled up waist high. Survivors of the fire explained how around midnight sparks started flying from the DJ booths shortly after smoke appeared. Party goers thought it was part of the experience, that it was all pyrotechnics to mark the new day. This meant that many did not flee as soon as they should have. All of this combined into a huge tragedy that claimed the lives of so many who were just about to start their lives. Since the incident, the club has been closed and abandoned. However, those who are around the club at night have witnessed some paranormal activity. Some have heard music coming from the club's doors or seen disco lights from a distance. You might think these are just kids who have snuck into party, but others have heard disturbing screams for help, but as they got closer to investigate, the screams fade away. There is a clear warning to those who might try to visit the place today that it's not safe. You might meet a paranormal spirit angry from the tragedy, or you might have a dangerous accident of your own. Coming in at number 4 we have Malacanan Palace. Malacanan Palace is the White House of the Philippines. It is the official residence and principal workplace for the President of the Philippines. It was originally built in 1750, so it has a long history, making it perfect for some paranormal happenings. The building has been home to many important people, but has also been a part of revolutions within the country, leading to many tragic passings on the property. In particular, there is one story that during one of the revolts by the people, they stormed and seized the home. They found one presidential worker was now unknown and made their own justice. Although this is not a confirmed story, it is often told to explain one of the paranormal guests who has been pictured outside of the home. They have been named the head ghost. The photo captured shows the outside of the palace with a headless figure facing the camera. It is thought that this poor soul was separated with his head before passing and now walks the halls searching for it. He is not the only ghost that has been spotted on the premises though. There have been sightings of former presidents, such as Manuel Cuzon and Manuel Roxas. There is also a report where Governor Imi Marcos, daughter Ferdinand Marcos, actually saw Cuzon's ghost at one point during her father's presidency. I guess when you dedicate your life to serving as president, it is hard to let go of the place you call home. If you were to visit, maybe keep your camera handy. You never know who you might just see. Number three on this list is the USS Lexington. The ship has its own museum dedicated to it now, and it is 100% haunted. The decommissioned World War II aircraft carrier is riddled with different phantoms. This museum is literally said to receive, on average, hundreds of reports of ghostly apparitions in one year. That is so much supernatural energy that is just congregated here. Now, World War II was obviously an awful time, and if this boat played a major role in the Battle of the Atlantic, which I imagine it did, then it assuredly saw its fair share of tragedies. The ghosts are not quiet about their presence, they make themselves very known. One of the most famous ones resides in the engine room. Apparently, visitors will go there and a spirit will form, explaining the engines and how they work. Then, when his lecture is over, poof. He will be gone in a puff of smoke. There's also a general sailor that walks around the ship and is actually said to be rather helpful. However, with these tame ghosts, there are some troublemakers as well. Small items that you may have on your person, a wallet, a watch, a phone, a keychain, anything like that are often reported missing after people get on this ship. If you do intend to go here, then hold on to your valuables very closely and get ready for a long lecture on engines. Number two on this list is Bragg Road. For over 
over 100 years now, this road has been haunted by a very strange and ghostly light. It's been seen by hundreds of people during that time, and nobody can explain it. Texas Highways says, in the heart of the big thicket is Hardin County, and in the heart of Hardin County is the infamous Bragg Road, home to countless sightings of the ghost road light that appears to nighttime travelers on the road between Saratoga and the defunct village of Bragg Station. Before the current road was built, the Arrow Strait clearing served as Santa Fe Railroad's branch line built in 1903. From its inception, locals considered the line haunted by Mexican laborers murdered by a thieving foreman, a deserter shot by Confederate soldiers, a hunter lost forever in the woods, and a decapitated railroad brakeman searching for his head. But all the stories share a common theme, a floating orb of light. The road replaced the railroad tracks in 1934, but the light remained, seen by hundreds of people over the decades. In the 1960s, Archer Fullingham, editor of the County News, spread its notoriety in articles. National Geographic published a clear photo of the light in a 1974 feature about the big thicket. Texas folklorist Francis Alberni he documented sighting stories from the old timers and young folks alike. In 1997, Hardin County designated Bragg Road as Ghost Road Scenic Drive Park. A pretty road through the woods in the daytime turns into a spooky spot for supernatural sightings by night. Word is the most auspicious times to see the light are on moonless autumn nights. What the heck is this light that has been haunting this place for all these years? Even National Geographic, a very highly reputable column, has posted stories on it with actual photos and including it. If it's a manifestation of some of these ghosts, then which ghost is causing it? And maybe more importantly, is it dangerous? If you want to find out, then you need to head to Bragg Road and look for yourself, but I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. And finally, number one on this list is the Yorktown Memorial Hospital. This hospital is definitely up there as one of the most haunted spots in Texas and could even make a play for the most haunted spots in America. It was built in the 1950s and managed by the Roman Catholic Church for a few decades before eventually closing down in 1986. Then for eight more years until 1992, it was a drug rehab facility, but finally in 1992, it closed for good. Since then, it's been abandoned and gained some very serious ghostly legends by the locals. One of the most famous demonic creatures that resides here is this black specter with bright glowing red eyes. It's not shy either and will attack you if you're here alone or in a vulnerable state. This is the most famous of the presences here, but it isn't alone. The ghost of a man who appears to have a bullet wound directly in his forehead is also said to live here. His ghost is a lot less forceful than the dark demon though, and is said to just show himself to visitors rather than attack them. The spirits of nuns are said to be on the second floor though as well. These spirits are similar to our demon creature and will claw and scratch at people who decide to come here. Along with all of this, we also get our classic indicators of a haunted location such as feelings of despair as you walk through, temperature changes, and moans echoing throughout the building. Avoid this place at all costs if you want to keep a tight grip of your sanity. In fifth place we have Port Arthur. Port Arthur is a town and former convict settlement on the Tasman Peninsula in Tasmania, Australia. The site forms part of the Australian Convict Sites, a World Heritage property consisting of 11 remaining penal sites originally built within the British Empire during the 18th and 19th centuries on Australian coastal strips. So collectively, these sites, including Port Arthur, are described by UNESCO as the best surviving examples of large-scale convict transportation and the colonial expansion of European powers through the presence and labor of convicts. From 1833 until 1877, Port Arthur was the destination for those deemed the most hardened of convicted British criminals, those who were secondary offenders having re-offended after their arrival in Australia. Rebellious personalities from other convict stations were also sent there. In addition, Port Arthur had some of the strictest security measures of the British penal system. So as you can imagine, that would produce some pretty scary figures still kicking around with a grudge to hold. One popular figure who has been spotted frequently goes by the moniker of Reverend George. A tour coordinator for the settlement is adamant that photos have been captured of the spirit, usually near the parsonage, which is where he's believed to have passed some time in the 1870s. One of the more fearful spirits spotted on the grounds is named John Gold, a nasty convict who enjoys leering at unsuspecting visitors, often causing uh, younglings to throw uncharacteristic tantrums 
and more. All in all, apparently there are more than 2,000 reports of unexplained activity, all bundled into 20 bulging files full of sightings of ghosts and strange emotional reactions to the buildings. In fourth place, we have the Adelaide Goal. Thought to be one of the most haunted places in South Australia, the Adelaide Goal is said to be regularly visited by some of the inmates and prison officers who once wandered its halls. First off, Frederick, otherwise known as Fred Carr, went the way of the uh, rope necklace on the 12th of November of 1927 for the killing of his wife, Maud. He protested his innocence, even up until the final moments before his death, exclaiming that the law required his body, but it cannot have his soul as he is innocent. Fred is said to regularly appear near the stairs leading to the upstairs cells of the new building. He is reported as a happy spirit, always neatly dressed in dark clothes and taking a polite interest in visitors wandering through his former home. Well, I'm uh, glad one of the ghosties is a uh, chipper. Next up, we have William Baker Ashton, who was the first governor of the Adelaide Goal, and despite being a reasonably fair man, he was accused of wrongdoing. William was a very large man, and when he died in his office in 1854, his body could not be manipulated down his apartment's steep, narrow staircase. Instead, he was unceremoniously lowered out of the front window to the undertakers waiting below. Three months after his death, William was exonerated which was a little too late. On warm, still nights with a hint of thunder in the air, his footsteps are said to be heard through the walls of solid stone as he struggles to move furniture in an empty room. Finally, Ben Ellis was the hangman for 10 years from the mid-1860s to mid-1870s and lived in a small apartment below what became the female dormitory. Ben took pride in his work and approached each task with complete professionalism and never questioned the right or wrong of his profession until the 30th of December of 1873 when he was required to hang a female prisoner, Elizabeth Wilcock. She was to be the first and only woman executed in South Australia. So this event changed the way Ben viewed his profession forever, and his restless spirit is said to appear often throughout the residence. Coming in at number 3 we have Clark Air Base Hospital. Clark Air Base Hospital was used during World War II and the Vietnam War. It now lays abandoned on a redeveloped Air Force base. It is said that as soon as you enter the destroyed building you instantly feel the paranormal energy that belongs there. The locals believe it to be cursed and dare not enter. Due to this, it is seen as the most haunted hospital in the country. The hospital has been ravaged by time, most parts overgrown with greenery, with others simply falling apart. The hospital today does still attract ghost hunters. Due to the amount of pain and suffering that occurred during its time, there are plenty of lost spirits trapped. A number of visitors have reported hearing voices echo through the empty halls of the hospital. Some hear screams. It is said that the voices of those trapped are of the soldiers who lost their lives in the war. It seems they feel they have unfinished business in the world. Many would have left behind their families to serve their country. These are not the only patients still staying there though. The first floor ward was home to the hospital's pediatric centre. People have heard the screams of newborn babies and children laughing. One security guard even heard the running footsteps of what sounded like a child. This entity ran straight past him one night while on patrol. He has since refused to patrol within the hospital walls. The hotel did still operate after the war until a nearby volcano erupted covering the hospital in ash. This was taken as a sign by the locals that nature was warning them to stay away. There are also those who ignore the warnings and venture inside. Just be warned, it seems to have a habit of causing tragedy. Coming in at number 2 we have Laparole House. The Laparole House was built by Roberto Laparole in the 1930s. During World War II the house was used by Japanese soldiers. They were reportedly a nasty group of brutes. They attacked local women, tortured suspected ties and even ended their life once they received any information that they had. The house is said to have seen many horrors due to all of this and the home was never the same after the soldiers left. Those who had been there within this time warned others to stay away. The house transferred ownership after the death of the head of the Laparole clan. They attempted to maintain the home but the years and horrors do show on the homes old exterior. The house has withstood much more than those around it both man made and natural disasters. To everyone's surprise the house was still standing after the deadly earthquake of 1990. In 2013 the home was turned into a museum. It was at this point that we started to hear more details about the hauntings inside. The show has been visited on many ghost haunting shows along with being featured in a film. Those who have visited the house have told of what they found and why the house is visited to often by paranormal investigators. One visitor claimed that they heard screams coming from the lower sections of the home. They rushed to go see if someone was hurt but they found nothing. As they read more about the home they believe this could have been linked to where the torture happened during the war. Others felt a dark presence in various sections of the home. Cold spots or a feeling of sadness that disappeared as quickly as they had felt it. 
Some said they felt watched like there is an entity in the home that no one can see but it is watching all who visit closely. One man claimed he heard water running in the rooms but when he went to turn it off there was nothing there, not even a source for any water to be coming from. The home is haunted by the ghosts of the past but might also hold an ancient entity that causes you to feel watched. Either way this is not a home I'll be visiting anytime soon. And finally coming in at number 1 we have Manheat Cave. Manheat Cave got its name from the smell of the accumulated bat droppings inside the cave. Located in the central Philippines this is a scary location due to more than the hauntings. Many people are scared of entering dark and possibly unstable caves, but this one contains more than just the fear of confined spaces. The cave is popular by those who like to explore deep into caves in their spare time. To do it at your own risk, the cave is said to be haunted by lost caving groups. The cave does not offer much light in the deep you go the more lost you get. There have been a number of groups that have gone lost throughout the years with no remains ever recovered. There are so many hidden corners within its maze you will never be found. Those who explore it today have encountered a number of paranormal occurrences. Some reports seeing shadows not cast by them or their group like there is someone else with them. Others have heard footsteps scrambling around as if in panic. Finally the further in you travel the more you hear a distant scream of help. Often only one of two members of your team will hear this, no matter how far towards the voice you go it will keep seeming out of reach. This causes people to go further and further into the caving system until their team bring them to their senses to head back. Those who have experienced this believe it may be how the others have gone missing. Some say there may be a demon living deep within the cave looking to bring the lost souls to feast on. Number 5 on this list is the Devil's Pond. The Devil's Pond is a very beautiful and calm looking body of water on the outside but it's far more dangerous when you step inside. Located in the Queensland forest, the pond itself almost looks like something straight out of a fairy tale but there's no happy ending here. 19 people have died in this tiny little pond. That's a staggering amount of people considering how small this one area is. In fact, so many people have had tragic endings here that there's literally a sign that says the creek has claimed many lives. Think about that. It sounds like something straight from a Scooby Doo story. Beware of this pond or else, but like seriously, beware of the pond. An ancient aboriginal legend tells us of how a runaway bride fell to her death here as she was escaping her wedding. The bride was named Ulana and it's believed that she is actually the cause of the many deaths that have happened here. It's said that she lures and tricks people into coming towards her and then they fall in and suffer the same fate that happened to her so many years ago. I'm not sure if the bride legend is true or not, but even if it isn't, this is clearly an incredibly dangerous spot in its own right. Australia is a big place so don't feel like this this is your only option if you're going for a swim when you're there. Number 4 on this list is the National Film and Sound Archive. Located in Canberra, which I actually just discovered is the capital city of Australia, always thought it was Sydney but actually it's Canberra so that's fun. But anyways, the Film and Sound Archive is a staple of media culture in Australia. It just hasn't always been that way. Crypto naturalist Tim says the NFSA building is regarded by many ghost hunters or paranormal aficionados as not only one of the most haunted in Canberra but also one of the most haunted in Australia. It's not because it houses spooky movies though. The ghosts that are reported in the building stem from the period that it was the Institute of Anatomy. That's right guys, this building prior to being what it is now was housing and studying dead bodies for 50 whole years. There were countless scientific experiments that went on here, on hundreds to potentially even thousands of corpses. During this time it was a museum as well and showcased the dead bodies to those who visited here. Because of all this death, the place is pretty popular among the ghosts. Apparently the dissection rooms are the most popular with many paranormal sightings here over the years. There's also a little girl who many visitors have seen. She lives in the air vents of the building and pops out through the grates every now and again. Luckily enough, her intense Intentions aren't evil though and often tries to make people laugh. That being said, I still don't think that going to this place that used to house a bunch of dead bodies is the best idea. We have Netflix for a reason now guys, so let's use it. In third place we have the Monte Cristo Homestead. The two story Victorian manor was built by pioneer Christopher William Crawley in the New South Wales town of June in 1885 before his homestead became riddled with death and now claims to be the most haunted house in Australia. To be specific, 
a stable boy burned to death, a tiny human was thrown down the stairs, a maid was lobbed off a balcony, and a caretaker kaboomed to death, among others. Pardon me, I jumped straight to the good stuff without the history. <clears throat> Christopher Crowley first built the mansion in, yep, 1885, where he lived with his wife Elizabeth, their seven kiddos, and a series of servants. He was a wealthy farmer and landowner who had made his fortune in Juni, a small town in the Riverina region, after the Great Southern Railway Line opened in 1878. With the success of his hotel and land sales, Christopher was able to retire early and began construction on his Monte Cristo homestead. This home was a status symbol for the Crawley family, and a social hub for the town's most wealthy. Now, despite all the glamour, the Crawleys are said to have been holding on to many dark secrets and tragedies. Remember a moment ago when I mentioned that a uh, young maid was said to have fallen to her death from the second story balcony? Well, um, a bleach stain still remains where the scarlet life force was attempted to be removed, and footsteps can be heard pacing the top balcony in the middle of the night. Some even see the outline of a female figure on the balcony as well. The Crawleys themselves weren't immune from the you know, deathly Monte Cristo. Their youngest daughter, a under a year old, died when her nanny accidentally dropped her down the stairs. Some claim it was on purpose, while others have ruled it as an accident. Feel free to let me know your theories in the comments. So the Monte Cristo homestead remained empty for over a decade after the last Crawley left in 1948. In 1963, Olive and Reginald Ryan purchased the now rundown manor for only about a thousand Australian dollars. That's a bargain. Bone chilling paranormal experiences were part of everyday life for the Ryan family, with Olive claiming to have had her name called out multiple times, only to find no one there. All of the offspring have also reported sightings of figures in old fashioned clothes and have felt cold hands on their shoulders. Not the best place to grow up. In second place, we have the Airedale Mental Hospital. It's estimated that an astonishing 13,000 people passed away within the walls of the so called Ararat Lunatic Asylum over its 140 years of operation, which made it perfect for today's list. So, the now known Airedale Asylum was a psychiatric hospital in Ararat, a rural city in Victoria, Australia. So, now considered a ghost town, the Airedale Asylum campus contains over 70 now abandoned buildings that once housed over a thousand patients. As with many asylums of the time, it was meant to be self sufficient and provide the patients, or inmates as they were referred to at the time, with labor that was believed to help in their treatments. Despite its closure as an asylum in 1993, the facility was used to house female prisoners during the renovation of the Dame Phyllis Frost Center. Now, While reports exist of apparitions, phantom sounds, visitors experiencing nausea, fainting and pain, some ghosts from Airedale's past have made themselves known to those who are alive today. George Fidimont was the last governor, so in 1886 he was showing a group of people around the asylum when they started down a set of stairs. Suddenly, George fell to his knees, suffering a major heart attack, and uh, passed on the spot. These days, tour guides and visitors hear heavy footsteps and banging on that same stairwell, but when they go to take a look, no one's there. Gary Webb was a career criminal and had a long rap sheet when he was finally taken into custody and sent to stay at Airedale. Gary got comfortable there and started to write letters to the media, telling them the inhuman and horrible things he was planning to do once he got out. Citizens began to worry, and a special law was passed to keep him contained there for the rest of his life. He began to uh, self mutilate at this time and was hospitalized over 70 times. He even castrated himself three times during his sentence. So today, Gary is said to haunt his former room, screaming at visitors to uh, get out and pushing them out the door. Visitors to the hospital who happen to walk past the office of the former superintendent, reporting a sudden bitter taste in their mouth, would you like? Like to know why? Of course you do. The superintendent ended his life in his office after swallowing cyanide. The rest of the woman's ward is haunted by a ghost named Nurse Carrie. She is said to watch over the tour guides. Her apparition, as well as others, have been seen in the woman's ward, donning old time nurses uniforms and disappearing into stone walls. Other folks report a tingling sensation in their head when they enter what used to be the uh, shock therapy room. In the J ward in particular, visitors report feeling ill and suddenly afraid. Others slip into a trance, only released from it when they exit the building. Some people have even been bitten or pushed while walking through the J ward. The ward is also said to you know, be haunted by three prisoners who were uh, went the way of the rope necklace and buried on the property. They are said to be restless because they weren't given a proper burial and their graves are only marked with three scratches on the prison wall. Uh, could somebody fix it and give them a proper burial? Please? In first place, we have the entire town of Picton, New South Wales. So according to my research, it's the most haunted town in Australia. But you know, Picton is also known for its countryside views and paranormal gardens. 
The town is located about 80 kilometers southwest of Sydney and has a historical significance due to its buildings and railway tunnels. The Mushroom Tunnel, also known as the former Red Bank Range Railway, is our main focus for today. There are famous tales of ghosts drifting around the tunnel, with the most popular being linked with a terrible railway accident involving a woman named Emily Bollard. Apparently when the tunnel was still in use by the railway, Emily had been walking through it and was uh, killed by an oncoming locomotive. It is unclear whether she deliberately ended her life or if her death was just an unfortunate accident. Reports suggest people often witness Emily and two other women ghosts and also hear some scary voices. You know, just some cryings and shrieks. No biggie. The apparition of Emily has been seen in the depths of the tunnel and is described as a white flowing figure of a woman with no face. Many people have also reported a sudden drop of temperature, eerie shadows, gusts of wind, orbs, body chills, and many weird other things happening inside the tunnel. The tunnel was apparently used to store mustard gas, spray tanks, and ammunition during World War II. It was also used as a mushroom farm, ergo the mushroom moniker amongst locals. From time to time, black shadows or figures have been seen on walls throughout the tunnel. Some witnesses have reported white lights hovering above people's heads and figures appearing out of the darkness. Ghostly younglings have been witnessed and electrical disturbances have occurred to devices in the tunnel. People have also felt, you know, sudden drops in temperature. Oh, almost forgot, there is a ghost train hunting the tunnel, because human spirits aren't enough. During a tour group experience, one witness recounted that when they reached the tunnel, he said the entire group noticed a random light in the distance and the sound of a steam train overwhelming the area. He said that everyone, including the tour guide, scrambled to hug the walls. And now remember, this tunnel has been inactive for almost 50 years at this time. The witness claims he felt the wind on his face as he closed his eyes and the train passed. Want to hear about a ghosty haunting the cemetery near the tunnel? Of course you do. Blanche Moon was a youngling who died in 1886 and haunts the cemetery. She was the daughter of Henry and Fanny Moon, and her father is believed to have been the timber worker who helped make the railway sleeper she fell off of while playing, which is the fall that led to her death. In January of 2010, a family visiting St. Mark's Cemetery snapped a photo apparently showing the ghosts of two younglings who died almost 60 years apart. And yep, you guessed it. One of them is believed to be Blanche Moon herself. The family claimed that there were no young people in the cemetery at the time the photo was taken, and that the figures of the two were only noticed when the pictures were downloaded to a computer. Other places in Picton rumored to be haunted are the Imperial Hotel, where many staff report the feeling of someone following them through several parts of the building, and at times, the jukebox begins to play, even though it's not connected to power. Wallandilly Shire Hall, which is reported to be haunted by three ghosts, including a bearded man wearing a hat and suit, a small mischievous boy, and a little girl, who is most often heard rather than seen. Stone Quarry Viaduct, where over the years many people have uh, drowned in the creek. Locals have heard ghoulish sounds of people swimming and splashing in said creek. And finally, Emmett Cottages, where the ghost of a woman is seen in the window of the building, and shop owners often find their displays have been moved overnight. Number five on this list is Casa Lercaro. This is a beautiful casa in tenor life and there is a ghost that haunts it consistently. Idealista says, The origins of this scary story are related to the old house of the Lacaro family which is located in Caledon San Augustin and dates back to the late 16th century. Catalina lived in this building. Many believe that this girl was the daughter of Antonio Lacaro and that she was forced to marry an elderly man and for this reason the young woman decided to take her own life by throwing herself into a well at the back of the house, an area which is now closed with a wall. Legend has it that Catalina's body is buried in one of the rooms within the house and haunts the property to this day. This is due to the fact that because she took her own life, the church denied giving her a Christian burial in a cemetery. This lack of a proper burial is probably leading to the fact that her ghost can't rest. As we've seen before on this channel countless times, people who get cast away like that regardless of their circumstances, their spirit often clings to the living. I doubt that they can help this in any way, it's just kind of the way things like this operate. It also doesn't help getting your body literally stuffed into the walls of your building and also taking your own life usually isn't the best either. Regardless of why this place is haunted though, it definitely is. The disembodied voice of this woman is heard frequently and it often manifests itself in this shrieking scream cry that's very unsettling for all of those who listen. Some have seen her apparition appear before them, but apparently this is a pretty rare occurrence. Number four on this list is the Madrid Sanatorium. As with most countries, there is a sanatorium that makes the list as being one of the most haunted. It just so happens to be one of the locations that sees the most tragedies in the world and therefore often has a clumping of dark spirits and energy. 
Idealista says, This sanatorium in the region of Madrid was built in 1941 to treat some of the most serious diseases that were plaguing the civilian population back then. These diseases were tuberculosis, leprosy, polio, fibrosis, and lung cancer. It was eventually converted into a psychiatric hospital and in 1995, it closed its doors once and for all. Until not long ago, it was possible to go inside and visitors could find the records and personal objects of former patients. Those who have been there speak of mysterious presences in the corridors, electrical devices that strangely stop working for no reason, and doors that suddenly close violently. Many people also claim to have seen lights in the immensity of plants that resemble lanterns walking around. I mean, it really is no wonder why this place is haunted, guys. We went from a sanatorium to a psychiatric hospital, and it's clear that both places saw a lot of death in their time. It should also be noted that psychiatric hospitals back in the day were not nearly as good as they are now. People were very often mistreated at these places, and it's not common to see those spirits linger on. There truly is no reason for you to be traveling to this place other than to test your luck with the ghosts. Something that I really don't recommend doing. Number three, the Henderson Castle. Established in 1895, this castle is a hub for many spirits and paranormal activity. I mean, it's a castle. The original owners, Frank and Mary Henderson, are said to haunt the castle as they passed away back in 1899. Yeah, I wouldn't want to leave either, living or dead. Additionally, other spirits are said to reside in the castle, a young girl and a dog. Yeah, a dog, we've got a dog ghost. How do you deal with that? Ghost barks? That'd be so scary. In 2005, the castle was occupied by Peter Livingstone McNellis and his family. When the family resided in the castle, Livingstone's son, Vincent, before anyone else had ever reported anything strange happening in the house, he said that he saw an apparition of a figure in the Victorian room. Originally, the changing room for one Mary Henderson. The son said while pointing at a picture of a woman dressed in an old period clothing, some Victorian clothing, that that was the woman he saw wearing that same clothing. I would throw up. If someone ever said that, I'd be like, oh, this Victorian painting? And one former innkeeper who stayed at the castle each night told Livingstone on numerous occasions that she also felt a presence coming up and down the staircase. A movement passing her on the stairs when she would walk by. Ugh, these are scary. Top five is like, you know, or top 10 is scary fish. This is, this is hard. This is some scary stuff. 9 a.m. I'm already getting spooked. While now the castle is being used for a bed and breakfast, guests have fallen victim to ghosts as well. Yeah, it's not over yet. The Henderson Castle is a very paranormal active ground that many ghost hunters have investigated and they've confirmed, in fact, that it's haunted by spirits. I trust them. The people that can go into these castles and physically do this, I'm like, yep, I trust your opinion, whatever. He just comes out, he's like, haunted. We're like, thanks, Daryl. This has been confirmed as these ghosts have interacted with many paranormal investigator teams in addition to guests and employees of the castle. Yeah, there's and everyone. The ghosts seem to be friendly, not evil whatsoever, so that's a good side, I guess, to being uh, haunted by ghosts. They have been known to speak and physically touch guests and employees. Just, they touch them on their back, side, shoulder. Always in the back, never see it coming. It's always in, always in this region. Not only that, but there's also been reports of radios making weird noises or turning on by themselves, even though they're either unplugged or just either turned off. Both bad, both scary. Guests and employees have also reported hearing footsteps upstairs, slamming doors from unexplainable sources, and some ghosts have been wearing the clothes that they wore while they were alive. Clothes that they wore while they died in, probably. As the spirit of Mary Henderson has been reported as many guests at the top of the staircase, wearing her usual getup. Imagine being like a clown, like a jester, and then you die in that, and that's what you look like as a ghost. You're like, what? I was doing a mascot gig. I don't look like a shark forever. Number two, Elegant Hodge. The old Elegant Elk Lodge was built in 1909. It was used as a psychiatric and TB hospital until its closure in 1948. The lodge was a former hospital that was frequented by mobster Al Capone and one that many say is haunted by at least seven different ghosts. Yeah, you thought, you thought two was bad. Add five more, now we got seven ghosts. And it's currently on the auction block in Elegant. If you have a lot of money and bravery, there you go. While the structure was originally built by physician John Robinson in 1909, somewhere in the 1920s, it was sold to a doctor from the Chicago area who had allegedly had underworld ties. That's a great doctor. You got just who you want working on your pancreas. Brought pancreas back today. The facility was supposedly frequented by mafia figures such as Al Capone, the Prohibition era Chicago mob boss, and his men. Yeah, when they needed medical attention or when they simply needed to get away from Chicago, 
And this is where they'd go. The, the old Elks Lodge, Al Capone. He's like, oh, it's cozy. They have great soup. <laughs> Years later, it was used as an Eagles Lodge and an Elks Lodge. And in 2010, it was acquired by an elegant woman who began renovating the property. But now she wants to sell it. Yeah, can't imagine why. Because one of the former doctors who owns the lodge had underworld ties, maybe? Something like that? I don't know. It led to a lot of people believing that there's a lot of undercover stuff about this lodge. It's still happening to this day. I don't know why I'm doing this like it's like over there, but I'm like, there's something going on in that lodge. Especially as it's known to hold seven different paranormal entities, like I mentioned previously. For many years, employees and visitors have told stories of spirits who relentlessly roam the building. Some of the paranormal activity that has been experienced here includes cabinets opening up by themselves in the kitchen, sounds of children laughing, it's always calming in the morning, photographic anomalies captured throughout the building, and like you name it, shadowy figures in the basement, all bad. Notably where the morgue was located, the basement, good stuff, a lot of, a lot of stuff happening in there. They'd be knocking on the front door, indiscernible conversations, and ringing at the doorbell when no one was present. Yeah, good stuff. Again, I have, uh, I have goosebumps, they're back. Guests also heard footsteps and the sound of hospital activity long after being used as one. They'd also see full-bodied apparitions of, uh, of children. They would just see ghost children. That would be it. I wouldn't have to see any more. I would just see the ghost children and be like, Again, see ya. Like that's. And finally, number one, point O Barks Lighthouse. There are plenty of lighthouses in Michigan, and plenty of them are rumored to be haunted, of course, because they're lighthouses and they're creepy, as they normally are. And this one is no exception. Built in 1847, real old, real, a lot of history with this one. The lighthouse is located on point O Barks. As the legend goes, early to mid 1800s, Peter Shook had been point O Barks' first lighthouse keeper. He was the OG. In 1849, Peter drowned while he and a couple of friends were sailing to Port Huron to pick up supplies for the lighthouse. He left behind eight kids and his wife, Catherine, and she took over at that point for Peter's duties, thus becoming Michigan's first female lighthouse keeper. Since then, people have claimed to see the spirit of Catherine walking along the edge of a cliff dressed in mourning clothes as she is still heartbroken by the loss of her lover, of course. As we talked about earlier, ghosts like to wear the things that they were, you know, that they passed away in. Again, would hate to be a clown outfit. That would suck. She had also been spotted in the window of the second floor wearing an apron, along with an apparition being seen, footsteps ascending and descending the tower stairs, and giggling has also been heard. Yeah, you hear giggling and there's cold spots, therefore haunted, for sure haunted. And the smell of burnt tobacco has also been whopping through the air many a times. Lighthouses are pretty stressful, more than fair. My paranormal investigators, specifically the Southeast Michigan Paranormal Society team, when they had a two-day intensive investigation after their search, they concluded that they believe that there's every reason for the lighthouse to be haunted. The investigators did some electric voice phenomenon work in the living room, and then they heard loud thuds from overheard. Like, where do they get this gear from, you know? Like, I, I want this gear. I have some questions of myself going on in the apartment. I want to swing it around a bit. A sound of something scraping along the floor as well, and additionally, during their investigation, the rocking chair had moved two feet and was still moving. Just love to keep rocking around. We love that. We love haunted rocking chairs. We love unexplainable forces. While they were upstairs, they also reported hearing heavy footsteps from another unknown source. So many ghosts, there's rocking chairs, people moving around, working in the basement. It doesn't sound like the afterlife is a peaceful one, if I'm being honest. Sounds like there's a lot of to do after you die. I'm not really looking forward to it. I thought I could just kind of float around near paintings, but now it sounds like I'm gonna have to go and wear this. Wear my morning clothes, who knows? Number five on this list is the Saz van Ghent Haunted House. As is customary on our top haunted places lists, pretty much every country has one home that's deeply haunted, and this is Belgium's. Culture Trip says, near the Dutch border, there was a haunted house so popular it attracted ghost hunters from all over Europe. Its fame became its downfall, and the owner had it demolished for safety reasons in 2011. After all, old crumbled walls and moldy wood are a health hazard if downtrodden by enthusiastic photographers and are sure to annoy the locals. Besides safety reasons, the owner had his sights set on selling the property with or without the house. According to local legends, a German soldier was electrocuted near the house during World War I and his ghost remains in the home. He was joined by four Canadian soldiers during World War II. Their tank hit a mine on the property. There are several unsettling tales about the house. Cell phones suddenly had no service, watches stopped ticking, doors slammed shut, and curious visitors captured strange mist on their cameras. Whatever the truth, we may never know. Since it was demolished, the haunted house of Saz van Ghent has turned into a legend. Now even though the house is no longer there, the ghosts are still said to be in the area. The land here is deeply haunted with our respect of World War I and World War II spirits. I find it really interesting that this home, or the ruins of it, aren't even haunted by a Belgian soldier at all, but literally by the ghosts of soldiers from different countries. I know that they died in unsettling and unnatural ways, and usually that's enough to leave a spiritual presence, but maybe 
maybe the fact that it wasn't their home country added to this as well. Maybe it's harder to rest in peace when you're on foreign soil, when your family and loved ones are thousands of kilometers away. This is honestly just a theory that I was coming up with as I was writing this, so please comment down below if you think it might have some legs. Also, it should go without saying, but don't go visit this spot if you're ever in Belgium. Number four on this list is La Roche and Arden. We've already spoke about the haunted house. Well, another staple, especially for European countries, is the haunted castle. The castle La Roche and Arden is definitely one of Belgium's most haunted. Culture Trip writes, In the castle of La Roche and Arden, there used to live a nobleman with a very beautiful daughter named Berth. He figured the best way to get a son-in-law was to organize a tournament and give the winner Berth's hand in marriage. The story doesn't actually mention what Berth thought of all this. The Count of Montague participated fiercely, despite already being engaged to another woman, Countess Alix de Selm. He won every game, but near the end of the tournament, a mysterious small knight in black entered the contest. Said knight killed the count and took birth to the bridal chamber. The next morning, the couple were found dead on the cliffs underneath the bridal chamber's window. The mysterious knight turned out to be Countess Alix de Selm, who had made a pact with the devil so she could kill her cheating fiancé and his wife-to-be. Ever since then, the countess ghost haunts the castle. Well, that story honestly screams Shakespeare play to me if I've ever heard one. We got drama, betrayal, murder, it literally has everything. And usually when it has all of those elements, a ghost is left behind to haunt what remains. This story is no different, and the residents of this castle since then, plus any visitors who have come here, are constantly terrorized by the ghost of this countess. Apparently she doesn't hide her presence at all, but makes herself very known. She'll attack visitors and has even been reported as possessing people. Most of the time, people make a full recovery from these possessions, but there have been reports where the trauma never goes away. Anyone who's willing to make a pact with the devil is certainly someone I want to stay away from, and being in ghost form makes that even worse. Number three on this list is the Beechworth Asylum. Ah yes, the classic haunted asylum. It feels like every country has one, but Australia's is particularly bad. The hospital opened in 1867 and was operational until 1995 when it was finally shut down. During that span when it was functioning, the asylum had over 3,000 patients die in its walls. That is an absurd number of people for a mental hospital. Part of this was because the methods that they used at this place weren't the best. Like most asylums that started in the 1800s, the treatments that they had for people dealing with mental health problems were far from ideal. Shock therapy, shackling patients up, just blatant torture were all things that went down at this asylum. Obviously, this didn't help anyone in dealing with their issues and caused a lot of people to pass away early. Now, these spirits of those who died here haunt the building. Screams can be heard ringing throughout the walls with people thinking it's the ghosts of those who were being shocked or tortured. Some have reported seeing the ghosts of nurses walking around the building. These aren't your typical kind nurses though, people have said that they look evil and unforgiving. Deep feelings of depression can be felt here and just a strong feeling of uneasiness. Personally, I see absolutely no reason to visit this horrible place ever and in all honesty, I'm kind of surprised that the building is still standing. Number two on this list is the Monte Cristo Homestead. Built over 150 years ago, this home has had such a tragic history that many believe it to be Australia's most haunted home, and honestly, after reading about the horrific things that happened here, I totally understand why. Australian Geographic writes, A chain of violent events in the house have triggered other supernatural incidents. A maid once plummeted to her death from the upstairs balcony, and the figure of a woman in period dress has been seen walking along the veranda to the bloodstained steps where she fell. A stable boy who burned to death in his bed at the hands of his master is thought to haunt the coach house, while the ghost of a mentally disabled man named Harold wanders the grounds. Kept chained in the caretaker's cottage for 40 years, Harold was found curled up at the feet of his mother's dead body. He died shortly after being sent to a home for the insane. The sound of clanking chains is said to warn of his approach. All of those things are super scary to begin with, but the most sighted ghost at this home isn't even mentioned there. Elizabeth Crawley inherited this house from her husband who passed in 1910, and her ghost has never left. 
After her husband died, she went into a deep depression and would rarely leave the home. She converted one of the upstairs rooms into a space to perform rituals. It's said that after her husband died, she only left this house twice and eventually died in it by herself. Now you'll know her ghost is present because there'll be a sudden and stark change in temperature whenever she nears. All of this lore has, of course, created a ton of interest around the home and it's been featured on several Australian ghost television shows through the years. However, you can also stay at this home if you wanted for $200 a night and experience all of this ghostly stuff for yourself. Why you would want to pay $200 of your actual money to get haunted and potentially even cursed is beyond me, but hey. To each their own, I guess. And finally, number one on this list is Port Arthur. Port Arthur is located in the Australian state of Tasmania, which is actually an island state 240 kilometers off of the Australian mainland. Port Arthur initially served as a penal site by the British Empire several hundreds of years ago. Towards the end of the 1700s, Britain stopped sending their prisoners to the Americas and instead started shipping them to Australia. What's even better than going to the mainland, though, was this small island state that they also owned. In in the middle of nowhere. Countless prisoners over the following decades were shipped off to Tasmania, with Port Arthur being one of the biggest final destinations for these criminals. Once they got there, their lives were never the same. Many of these people that were shipped here had committed small crimes out of sheer necessity, stealing some food to survive or something to keep their families warm. The severity of the crime mattered little to the British authorities though, and even if it was something as small and insignificant as this, you could very easily find yourself stuck in this prison for the remainder of your life. The prisoners that got sent here were forced to work tirelessly in the timber, lumbering, and shipbuilding industries. Port Arthur actually boomed for the next 100 years with more and more convicts being sent here. This was obviously very beneficial for the British government, but not so much so for the people who had to make this place their home. Many of them were mercilessly killed for no good reason. They were often tortured consistently if they weren't working hard enough or had done something that wasn't totally up to the standard. It really was a horrible way of life for those who got sent to Port Arthur. At around the end of the 1800s, Port Arthur started to slow down and eventually stopped altogether. The death of this location didn't end though, because in 1996, Port Arthur saw one of Australia's darkest moments ever. 35 people were gunned down in a mass shooting that took place at Port Arthur. All of this death from various generations has caused Port Arthur to be one of Australia's most haunted spots. In fact, over the years, there have been more than 2,000 incidents of unexplained paranormal activity. Things moving, voices, shrieking, Speaking, change in temperature, you name it, it's taken place at this location before. The asylum at Port Arthur is said to be the most haunted spot here, with reports of people getting scratched and touched by unseen entities. Port Arthur has had a horrible history to it, and it's not a place I'd recommend venturing out to if you do happen to catch yourself in the Australian state of Tasmania. Coming in at number 5 we have Padre Hotel. The Padre Hotel located in Bakersfield has a reputation for being a terrifying place to stay. Many admit they were skeptical at first, but the hotel lived up to the paranormal stories. The hotel was first opened in 1928. Since then it's seen many tragedies take place within its walls. The local archives hold many stories of those who have lost their lives there. These guests now haunt the hotel, leaving behind signs that they still stay here to this day. There have been so many incidents here, it's sometimes unclear who was contacting the guests. In the 1950s, there was a large fire where many perished. Some say that in spots around the hotel, you feel an intense panic and sense of terror come over you, as if you yourself were trapped in the blaze. The upper floors are said to have the most paranormal activity, in particular the seventh floor. It is said to be a hotbed for unexplained paranormal happenings. Many guests even request to stay on this floor to see if they can experience these terrors for themselves. The hotel's general manager has shared some of the terrifying experiences she has had there. She said one night while she was making her rounds, she opened a door to a closet. Suddenly, she had an overwhelming feeling of cold and immediate adrenaline. She said her hair was standing up on her arm. Suddenly, the door slammed and she ran as fast as she could out of the hotel. She said she told a couple of people who found her outside. She was clearly frightened and everyone wanted to know what she saw. She said since then she has rarely told the story. She has worked there for over 10 years and has never felt fear like this before. Others have witnessed reoccurring ghosts, stories that fit together from strangers who have never met. One common sight the hotel is a man stood on the roof. Many see him as they first arrive at the hotel, thinking he might be doing work on the roof. They think nothing of it. He has been seen many times by different guests. Those who ask what he is doing up there are told no one is allowed on the roof after a tragic accident had occurred at the hotel years ago. 
Many believe it is the man's ghost who keeps appearing to guests as a warning to not enter the hotel. In at number 4 we have Alcatraz Island. Alcatraz Island is one of the most notorious prisons in history and can be found on the San Francisco Bay. Before it became a federal penitentiary, it was discovered by Spanish naval officer and explorer Juan Manuel de Ayala who founded the island in 1775 and built several small buildings and other minor structures on the island. In 1850, President Millard Fillmore ordered Alcatraz Island to be set aside specifically as a United States military reservation for military purposes following the Mexican American War. In 1861, the island held hundreds of Civil War prisoners. Then, in 1934, the prison opened and operated until March 1963, and as of lately, has become a major tourist attraction. Alcatraz is the site of a now abandoned federal prison, the oldest operating lighthouse on the west coast of the United States, and early military fortifications. Landmarks on the island include the main cell house, dining hall, lighthouse, the ruins of the warden's house, social hall, parade ground, recreation yard, water tower, and other small buildings. Some of the most infamous criminals were kept at Alcatraz over the years, and due to the strong currents around the island and the ice cold water temperatures, it made escaping nearly impossible. Some of the most notorious criminals held at Alcatraz include Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly, and Bumpy Johnson. Contrary to popular belief, it was in fact possible to escape and swim to shore. Extremely hard, but possible. During the 29 years of operation, the penitentiary claimed that no prisoner successfully escaped, but many questioned that. A total of 36 prisoners made 14 different escape attempts. 23 were caught alive, 6 were shot and killed during their escape. 2 drowned, and 5 are listed as missing and presumed drowned, but that is highly debated. Many believe of the 5 missing, all or at least some of them were able to make it to land and were never caught. Due to the amount of history and deaths in and around the island, many believe there are dozens of spirits that roam in the abandoned buildings and even in death are unable to escape the island. Alcatraz is a popular tourist attraction because of its ghost sightings, weird occurrences and history, and they offer daily tours to see the island and its buildings. Number 3 on this list is the Sony Inferno. Forest. The Sonian Forest has a very strange phenomenon that occurs in it, which is locals believing it's haunted. Culture Trip says Diogen is a strange fog that hovers in the Sonian Forest near Brussels. The fog has been described as greenish, but is also grey, orange, or white. What's consistent in the descriptions are small, shadowy figures in the fog and the sound of laughing children. The name Diogen is a misspelling from the original name Diogen, which literally translates to the eyes. It's called the eyes because there's always something large in the fog that stares at you. There have been reports of the figures near the forest that dart in front of cars and a bloody little handprint on the car window that leaves as soon as the fog is gone. A bloody little handprint. That is a big no thank you from me guys. This sounds like something that has come directly out of a horror film and something that should be avoided at all costs. Nobody knows why this fog appears, but the general consensus is that some very powerful ghostly entity conjures it. Who this entity or entities is or why they reside in this forest is unknown, just that they're extremely powerful. Locals are also very scared of this spot and it's become infamous for disappearances throughout the years. Unless you want to disappear in a greenish smoke, I'd avoid it at all costs. Number 2 on this list is the John McRae Bunker. Ypres is a city full of history. You could almost say it's haunted by history. Step into the quiet Essex Farm Cemetery by the canal to uncover a ghostly site. The bunker is supposedly haunted by poet and physician John McRae. Many ghost hunters who come here claim to hear echoes of voices, gunshots from World War I, or even witness the ghost of John McRae and his friend Alex. The bunker is a memorial site in honor of John McRae's memory. He wrote the famous poem in Flanders Fields for friend and fellow soldier Alex Hemmler. Hemmler died on the battlefield and McRae followed not long after passing away from pneumonia. Some say that after hearing gunshots, you'll see flashes of Hemmler's ghost. Many European countries have at least one site that is haunted by the ghosts of soldiers, usually from World War I or World War II, and this bunker is Belgium's. It just so happens to be a very famous soldier though. Growing up in Canada and being Canadian, I've read and heard the poem in Flanders Fields many times. It honestly makes me really sad to hear this legend and know that John McRae's soul has yet to find peace and still clings to earth in what I can only imagine is a horrible purgatory state. If you do ever go to this place, then make sure to show 
some respect to him, his friend Alex, and all the other soldiers who lost their lives here. Maybe that's what his soul needs to finally pass on. And finally, number one on this list is the Crypts of Laken. These crypts are very close to the Royal Crypts of Belgium, but have been dubbed far creepier and far more haunted. Crypts are usually pretty creepy to begin with. One of the most haunted spots in the world is the Paris Catacombs after all. These get especially riddled with ghosts though after they've been abandoned for a long period of time. And that's exactly what went down at the Crypts of Laken. For 30 years these crypts were completely forgotten about and abandoned and those that were kept here just rotted away underground. 30 years later a cemetery was built over top of this place and people started coming back. When they went down there again though it wasn't how they remembered it. Creatures, dark beasts with red glowing eyes and an appetite for apparently only flesh live down there now. These underground crypts that stretch super far used to be only the home to the dead but now they're also the home to these demon things. I personally see no appeal to going down to an ancient abandoned underground crypt anyways but throw on some werewolf wannabes and this is definitely a spot that I'd avoid. In at number five, we have Stocksness Beach. The Stocksness Beach is a popular sightseeing spot for locals and tourists to see and take pictures of the Northern Lights. But many people think that this beach is extremely haunted. It is located in the southeast coast of Iceland and has a stunning view with a massive mountain and beautiful black sand. A photographer, Eric Bennett, had an experience where he had stayed on the beach all night to wait for the lights to take pictures. He and his friend Matt were the only people there as the sun went down and the ocean tide came up and washed away all the footprints from the people during the day. They go to the car for a nap and at 11pm they wake up and find the northern light shining throughout the sky. They get out their tripods and cameras and start shooting. They were the only two people on the beach. When they looked down they saw mysterious footprints leading up to their tripod and then they just stopped. They were big to find wet footprints. They suddenly turned on their headlamps and no other footprints of humans were found in sight. Eric showed the photos he had taken of the footprints to Matt and he freaked out saying he had a strange feeling the entire night and wasn't able to nap because he felt like someone was standing outside of the car watching them. The two men stayed and tried to take more photos but they started hearing voices being carried around the beach by the wind. A dark and heavy feeling was weighing on them so they left immediately and as they drove away the heavy feeling started going away. Eric had told his story to a fellow traveller and the man had just finished a documentary about the haunted beach and that there have been many sightings by locals and tourists of a giant hairy man walking out of the ocean at night. This beach is also home to many shipwrecks over time and many believe that the souls that passed away from these wrecks still roam the beach to this day. In at number 4 we have Hivitvartan Lake. Hivitvartan Lake, otherwise known as White River Lake, is located in the highland on the Kajola Highland. Many icebergs surround the area and because of the glacial rivers the lake always looks a bit milky which contributes to the nickname. One of the many huts or travel lodges in the highlands that locals and tourists can stay in while in Iceland. There is one hut in particular that is rumoured to be haunted and it's the mountain hut at Hivitvartan nearby the lake. It's rumoured to be one of the most haunted places in Iceland. The hut was built by the Icelandic Touring Association in 1930 and there are many paranormal stories surrounding this hut since its inception. Many claim to see the ghost of a young lady dressed in grey in the hut. Many locals and guests claim to experience disturbances by the spirit and some have claimed to have seen her in one of the windows from outside when arriving late at night and then when entering the hut it was empty. A particular bed in the hut is believed to be unsafe and almost impossible to sleep in. Many people who have tried to sleep in the bed claim that they have been kicked out of the bed by force during the night and when they were woken up no one was around. It's said that this is a ghost of a young woman and it's her bed and she won't allow anyone to sleep in it, hence why people are forced out of the bed while sleeping. Many travelling in Iceland avoid staying in this hut but many paranormal investigators and ghost lovers visit to try and come in contact with the woman. In at number 3 we have the Queen Mary. The iconic Queen Mary ship is located in Long Beach and is one of the most haunted destinations in the United States. The ship was first christened in 1934 by Queen Mary herself and it was retired more than three decades later. It has since been converted into a hotel where guests can sleep surrounded by the original wood panelling and portholes. If you do plan on staying on the ship you may not be the only guest here though. There are multiple stories of different spirits that haunt the ship. There are so many different rooms on the ship that are haunted by many different ghosts including the Mauritania room, the Mayfair room, boiler room number 4 and the first class swimming pool just to name a few. State room 
Room B340 in particular was a problem long before the Queen Mary became a hotel. In 1948, British third class passenger Walker J. Adamson passed away in the room and the details of his death are unknown. Later in 1966, a woman staying in the room reported that she had awoken when the bed covers were pulled off her and she saw a man standing at the foot of her bed. She screamed and rang for the steward but the man quickly vanished into thin air. Years later, guests staying in the room reported hearing someone knocking on the door in the middle of the night, seeing bathroom lights mysteriously turn on, and even the hotel's maids would often find the bathroom water running even when no one had stayed in the room for days. Another area that is a paranormal hotspot is Shaft Alley or Hatch Door Number 13, and it was the site of a gruesome accident where a crewman was crushed to death. His ghost is regularly seen around the area now. People often report hearing the sound of someone running behind them and whistling, while others have noticed that spots of grease that appear to look like fingerprints appear on their face. And some have even seen a figure of a bearded man in blue overalls that looks like a crewman. Due to the amount of paranormal activity, many ghost enthusiasts, investigators and TV shows frequently visit the ship to stay and partake in the ghost tours they offer. In at number 2 we have the Roosevelt Hotel. The Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood was made famous due to the number of celebrities, past and present, who have stayed there, including one of the most famous women in history, Marilyn Monroe, who stayed at the hotel for two years early in her career and posed for her first commercial photography shoot by the hotel's pool. Many believe her spirit, among others, still linger through the halls of the hotel. Some of the most famous people in history have stayed at this notorious hotel, including Charlie Chaplin, Shirley Temple, Prince, Ernest Hemingway, Brad Pitt, and Angelina Jolie, just to name a few. The hotel opened in 1927 and is the oldest continually operating hotel in Los Angeles and is named after the 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt. It is a staple in Hollywood due to it being on Hollywood Boulevard and being so close to the Hollywood Walk of Fame and the famous Chinese Theatre. The first ever Academy Award ceremony was held at the hotel on May 16, 1929 inside the Blossom Ballroom. It was a private ceremony open only to the Academy members with a total of 270 people in it. Attendance. At the time, the Oscar nickname for the award had not yet been invented. It would be introduced four years later. Many guests have experienced paranormal activities while visiting the hotel, like feeling cold spots, receiving mysterious phone calls, and capturing orbs in their photographs. There are many rumours of hauntings and ghosts at the hotel involving celebrities who have previously stayed there, like Montgomery Clift, Carol Lombard, and Errol Flynn. Other stories involve a little girl in a blue dress named Caroline that have been seen by multiple hotel guests and employees. Montgomery Cliff's spirit has been blamed for patting guests' shoulders and watching the maids who clean his old room, 928, where he stayed for a total of three months while filming From Here to Eternity. Carol Lombard has also been spotted floating around the upper floors. The most famous spirit of the hotel is, of course, Marilyn Monroe. Many people believe she still roams the hotel and can be found in her old room, 1200, and many have witnessed her ghostly figure in the mirror. This hotel is both famous and notorious, and if you're brave enough, you can stay in these celebrities' old rooms. And finally, in at number one, we have the Cecil Hotel. The Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles has been known by many to be haunted hotel, but gained massive media and global attention when the popular Netflix documentary came out regarding the disappearance of Elisa Lam, who went missing while staying at the hotel. The case was extremely mysterious and made many question the sinister background of this notorious hotel. The hotel was built in 1924 as a destination for business travelers and tourists. It flourished throughout the 1940s, but saw a decline as the nearby Skid Row became extremely overpopulated and drugs and crime ran rapid. As many as 10,000 homeless people lived within a four mile radius from the hotel. For decades, this hotel had a reputation for violence and death due to the number of mysterious cases that have happened throughout the years at the Cecil. The first documented case of someone taking their own life occurred in 1927 when Percy Cook shot himself while inside his hotel room after failing to reconcile with his wife and child. The next one occurred in 1931 and more happened throughout the 1940s and 50s. Not only have many people taken their own life in this hotel, but many unresolved murders and mysterious deaths have also happened here. Many people believe all these occurrences make this one of the most haunted places in California due to all the souls still roaming around the hotel. One of the most famous true crime cases is that of the Black Dahlia, and it was confirmed in 2015 that Elizabeth Short was seen drinking at the Cecil's bar in the days before her notorious and unsolved murder in 1945.
1947. In the 1980s, the hotel had been the residence of one of the most famous serial killers of all time, Richard Ramirez, nicknamed the Night Stalker. Throughout the 1980s, he ran rapid in his killing spree, and he was a regular presence on the Skid Row area. And according to a hotel clerk who claims to have spoken to Richard, he had stayed at the hotel for weeks before his capture in 1985. Another serial killer, Austrian man Jack Underwaker, stayed at the Cecil in 1991, possibly sought to copy Ramirez's crimes. While staying there, he had killed at least three women. An astonishing number of people have lost their lives at this notorious hotel, and many deaths remain unsolved to this day. When Elisa Lam's case was made public, it caused even more confusion and questions about what really goes on at this hotel. The Cecil Hotel is known to be one of the most haunted places, not only in California, but throughout the world. In at number five, we have Eldridge Hotel. The Eldridge Hotel is a historic building located in downtown Lawrence, Kansas. The building is named after Shayla Eldridge, who was a prominent anti-slavery individual who lived here in the 1800s. The building became an apartment complex in the 1970s, but there was a strong desire by the city to see it open as a hotel, and a group of investors contributed, as well as the city of Lawrence, into industrial revenue bonds to make this dream a reality. In the later 1980s, it opened as a hotel. A popular story has circulated about the hauntings in this hotel, with the locals, employees, and guests that the ghost is that of Shayla Eldridge, who haunts the halls to this day. Many claim that because the Eldridge House's original cornerstone is located in room 506, and his spirit will manifest in that room and also roam around the building. People who have stayed in this room have claimed to witness breath marks on recently cleaned mirrors, doors opening and shutting on their own, and lights turning on and off by themselves. Others claim that the hotel's elevator is also haunted by a different spirit, who is known to open and shut the elevator doors on the fifth floor. The fifth floor is said to contain a portal to the spirit world. A popular photograph was taken during the 1980s that clearly shows a ghost-like figure in the building's elevator. Many other photographers have mentioned having unexplained technical difficulties with their cameras when near the elevator. The story of the hotel and the hauntings of Eldridge was the inspiration for the movie The Demon Shadow, and the hotel was featured in the series My Ghost Story and has been depicted in many writings. Many believe the rich history has resulted in the amount of paranormal activity. In at number 4, Midland Railroad Hotel. The Midland Railroad Hotel is known for serving the largest steak around, and if you can finish all of it, you get it for free. But it has a sinister, haunting history. It was first a popular train stop in the 1890s, then known for being the location for the movie Paper Moon, where many scenes were filmed at this hotel in 1973. Since then, it's gone through fires, the Great Depression, and plenty of renovations. It is now owned by the Wilson Foundation, has been back in business since 2003, and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Not only is this hotel known for these interesting things, it's most known now for the paranormal activity that lurks around the hotel. The most famous ghost is that of an orphan girl that haunts the third floor who knocks on doors, runs through the hallways, and even jumps on your bed, leaving little footprints. A ghost hunting team has experienced this spirit, and have recorded sounds of the little girl. Another third floor room is where a sheriff was said to have been lynched, and sometimes the door is unable to be unlocked even by the master key. Ghostly figures have been seen at the top of the stairs, and things in the kitchen have flown distances suddenly, without being touched by anyone. There are also many ghostly figures that are seen on the staircases, and have left many to believe that the fire that took many lives back in 1902 are the results of some of these paranormal presences. The owner of the Midland Railroad Hotel, Melinda Merrill, says that there's not one employee who hasn't seen or felt something, and you can definitely feel a presence when you enter the hotel. In at number 3 we have Holobalagara Cemetery. There are many cemeteries around the world and many of them are haunted, and that's also the case for the Holobalagora Cemetery. This cemetery is one of the most famous in Iceland and is often called the Old Churchyard. It opened in 1838 in Reykjavik and is the largest 19th century cemetery in all of Iceland, and was replacing a previous burial ground used since the Viking times. The city placed the graveyard on a small hill a couple of blocks off the city central Pong. Some of Iceland's most famous people are buried here, including John Sigerson, the father of Icelandic independence, Johannes Feinsen Kajavel, Iceland's most famous painter, and Ingeborg Bjarnason, the first woman member of parliament. The graveyard also houses many of the victims of the 1918 Spanish influenza pandemic and a monument to French sailors who were lost at sea. In a country with minimal trees, the cemetery is covered. It's practically a forest, which makes this resting ground that much more eerie. The graves are surrounded by willows, spruce, birch, and rowan trees. Many come to pay respects to the legendary Icelandic buried here, but many believe the old Vikings previously buried here.
care along with the influence of victims are the ones who haunt the living to this day. A videographer from New Zealand that films his travels visited Iceland and went to the cemetery during the night. And he claims to have caught orbs on camera that were floating in and around the gravestones. He had created an entire video of this finding and he was convinced that there was paranormal activity at this cemetery and he was thoroughly spooked during his time there. Many paranormal investigators and ghost hunters come to try and interact with these spirits. Locals and tourists who have visited the cemetery have seen spirits and have felt that they are being watched. Many believe the spirits often haunt the grounds at night time so if you're planning a trip to Iceland I would avoid the cemetery especially after the sun goes down. In at number 2 we have the priest's stone. Many people in Iceland and in the surrounding areas believe in and have many tales of elves, trolls and fairy people. One of the most famous tales is about haunted rock. Where a kind and loving priest's spirit haunts and terrorizes his love even after death and he still haunts the rock and the people who visit it. The story has been told for ages and are very well known among the people of Iceland. It took place in Hogadula, not far away from a town of Akuriai. The story has slightly changed over time but it's believed that it started on a stormy night before Christmas when a priest's apprentice rode quite a distance to meet the woman he was in love with. On the way there the weather was rough and he drowned while crossing a raging river and only his horse survived. His love, not knowing of his death, gets a visit the next evening. In the darkness she believed that it was the priest's apprentice and goes out with him on his horse. During the ride the man's hat falls off revealing it was a skeleton. She gains no peace from this ghost who wants her to join him in death. She goes to a sorcerer for help and he achieves putting the ghost to rest but it was on unholy ground, right outside the graveyard at the country church at Mikra. The cursed stone is still believed to hold the lovesick priest's apprentice captive to this day and the stone is still very visible. Due to this famous tale many tourists and locals come to see the cursed rock hoping to come in contact with the priest's apprentice's ghost. In at number 1 we have Hofoy House. The most haunted place in all of Iceland is the Hofoy House. It is believed by locals and tourists to be the most haunted place. This home is located in the city of Reykjavik. It was built back in 1909 and sits on the waterfront just off Borgarten. This home was inspired by Nordic Art Nouveau and was constructed in Norway and shipped to Iceland. The Hofoy home has a haunting history. It was initially built for the French consul Jean-Paul Boulogne in Iceland. Then it was sold to a judge and a poet in Einar Benningsen who claimed it was haunted by the ghost of a young woman often nicknamed the White Lady. The ghost is that of Solberg Johnstadir who had poisoned herself after Einar's verdict on a notorious case. At the home she would often appear at the night and haunt him and the owners of the home claim to hear strange noises and see the figure of a woman in the early hours of the morning. Other accounts believe that she had drowned or that the home was built on Viking burial site where the souls of the Vikings still roam the house and the land around it. This home is best known for in 1986 when former US President Ronald Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev where they discussed negotiations on military control and disarmament. The Hofoy has come to represent Iceland's diplomacy and the start of the of the Cold War. In 2015, a sculpture of Ina was made and is displayed outside the home. It has also housed many other famous figures over the years, including Queen Elizabeth, Winston Churchill, and Marlene Dietrich. Nowadays, the Hofoy is owned by the city of Reykjavik and is currently used for official receptions and meetings, and it's not open to the public, but many locals and tourists flock to explore the home from the outside, hoping to come in contact with the ghost of Solberg. Number five on this list is the Seelbach Hotel. Seelbach Hotel is located in the heart of Louisville and has been there for quite some time. Virginia Travel Tip says, In 1905, the Seelbach Hotel in Louisville opened its doors. For more than a century, this exquisite historic hotel has functioned as one of Kentucky's most important historical landmarks. The hotel, on the other hand, is notorious for its ghostly activity. Patricia Wilson, the Lady in Blue, is one of the hotel's most famous sightings. She was a woman who had recently divorced her spouse and intended to meet him later at Sealback to try and work out their differences. Unfortunately, her husband died in a car accident and never showed up. She was devastated by the loss and she died not long after that. As a result, guests notice a woman in a blue outfit strolling around the hotel. Other ghosts have been reported at the hotel and they include a woman dressed in old worn out clothing who was approached by a staff member attempting to communicate with her, but then she disappeared. Most of the encounters with this woman have been tame, but there have been some that have gotten quite aggressive. Some teenagers were apparently making fun of her or doing something that they shouldn't have been doing, and she responded by literally clawing and scratching at one of them, leaving horrible marks behind. The victim also said that it felt as if she crawled into his brain and told him horrible secrets about himself that he'll never be able to forget. A hotel like this is supposed to be nice and relaxing, but based on what I've read, 
I don't know if that's gonna be the experience you get at Sealbach. Number four on this list is the Talbot Tavern. Really too bad that this place is haunted because it would have been a pretty nice spot to get a brew if it wasn't. Virginia Travel Tip says, built in 1778, the Talbot Tavern is located in Bardstown, Kentucky. Currently, the Haunted Kentucky Tavern serves as both a restaurant and a five room B&B and it's known for being haunted. A former accountant recalls coming across a man in a long coat strolling across the top floor. He then turned to face her and began laughing uncontrollably. Another famous hotel resident was the lady in white who forced a couple to flee the hotel in the middle of the night since she was hovering over them while sleeping. Many workers and visitors to the residence have related accounts such as orbs floating around the rooms, flashes of lights without cameras being seen, objects moving on their own, and doors opening and closing when no one's in the building. I, for one, am not trying to wake up to a ghost just hovering over me, guys. Honestly, it might give me a heart attack and, well, I'd never wake up again. This place is weird because no one really knows why it's as haunted as it is, but there's no doubt that it's teeming with paranormal energy. Pick a different place to go get a drink if you're in Kentucky. In at number three, we have Hotel Josephine. The Hotel Josephine is considered by many to be the most haunted hotel in Kansas. It was built in 1890, located in the city of Holton, and is the oldest consecutive operating hotel west of the Mississippi River. The history of the hotel is rich but also very haunted. The hotel was built by A.D. Walker and was named after his daughter, Josephine. When it was built, she was only four months old and she attended the local elementary school and graduated Kansas University. Her graduation photo was hung in the front parlor above the antique piano and according to the current hotel manager, Tracer Fox, her spirit is just one that is wandering the hotel. Tracer Fox has expressed his belief in the spirits when he first stayed at the hotel. He was woken up suddenly at 3.30 a.m. and his bed was moving. He figured there was an earthquake, but when nothing in the news confirmed it, he knew it was a spirit. His mother came and stayed in a room across from him and experienced the exact same thing he did with no explanation for it. They had been skeptics before these happenings, but they are both now firm believers. Other guests staying at the hotel have similar stories, as well as experiencing hearing strange sounds, laughter, footsteps, and seeing shadows. It has been expressed that spirits can be found on each floor. One of the most haunted rooms in the hotel is the Buffalo Room room, where shadows are often seen and photographed in the mirrors around the room, as well as the Carry Nation room. According to historical documents, a woman hanged herself in the bathroom of that room and many guests staying there have come out of the room clutching their necks and having a hard time breathing. The hotel has brought several famous guests over the years, including former US President Grover Cleveland, who stayed there in between his two terms as president, along with Carrie Nation, Robert Louis Stevenson, Charles Curtis, Kirstie Alley, John Sullivan, Sam Rabin, and Harry Langdon. Due to the amount of paranormal activity and active spirits in this hotel, the hotel hosts several paranormal and haunted events throughout the year. Many ghost hunters come to Holton to check out the more than century old hotel. It's also been featured in many television shows including Coast Tours of Kansas and Haunted Rooms America. Coming in at number two, we have McIntyre Villa. The McIntyre Villa is one of the unusual and historic houses built in the city of Atchison. It was built in 1889 for John McIntyre, a wealthy manufacturer of harnesses and saddles. He did a great deal of business with wagon trains plying the overland trails. John McIntyre's first wife, Alice, died in 1892. He married a second wife, Anna Conlon, a widow with three sons, and after John's death in 1902, Anna continued living in the home until her death in 1916. During her ownership, the house was home to many of her relatives, with lots of children as well. Around 1925, Anna's brother, Judge Charles J. Conlon, a prominent Atchison lawyer, and his family made the villa their home. In 1952, the McIntyre Villa was purchased by by Miss Isabel Altus, a retired professional violinist and eccentric. She lacked the financial resources to be able to restore the home and shortly before her death she sold the home to George Gerardy in 1969, who started to rehabilitate the old estate. Many people past and present who have lived in and visited the home have experienced many paranormal experiences. There have been figures being seen in windows when no one is home, lights turning on and off in the tower which doesn't have electricity, a speaker getting thrown off the counter and boxes mysteriously moving on on their own. Sounds of slamming doors throughout the night, footsteps walking down the hallway on the second floor throughout the night.
light. The feeling of being watched, drastic temperature changes, voices, the scent of a woman's perfume and the hunt of cigarettes. The number of encounters and confirmed hauntings seen and heard around this home is crazy and it's considered to be one of the most active paranormal homes in all of the US. The amount of activity in this home makes it a hub for investigators, mediums, psychics and ghost hunters. They offer ghost tours of the home and you can stay overnight to try and encounter these spirits. And finally in at number 1 we have Sally House. The Sally House is said to be the most haunted place in Kansas. This home was built in the turn of the century and is located in the city of Atchison. After being built the home was bought by the Atchison physician who worked from his home. The front served as an office space and examination rooms and the upstairs is where the doctor and his family lived. One day a frantic mother arrived at the home carrying her young daughter Sally. The child had collapsed from severe abdominal pain. The doctor diagnosed appendicitis but there was no time to delay surgery. Sally unfortunately passed away on the operating table. For years after many believed Sally stayed to haunt the home and the haunting grew infamous in 1993 when the house was rented to a young couple. It started when the couples dog would growl at nothing and make even louder growls when near the upstairs nursery. Things began to take a violent turn when fires broke out in the house and a series of sinister attacks on the husband began. The former operating area would feel extremely cold and objects would visibly move when the young man came close. He could feel scratches on his chest and abdomen but the ghost never attacked the wife or baby. Not only did the former residents experience the paranormal activity but locals and other visitors of the home have experienced objects moving on their own, mysterious coldness, physical touches, video and investigative equipment that stopped working, trained guide dogs refusing to enter the nursery and unexplained scratches or bruising on their bodies during and after their visits. Psychics have visited the home and many have confirmed the presence of spirits in the home and have even communicated with them and many have entered as skeptics and left believers. Due to the number of experiences in the home it's gained a lot of media coverage from television channels including A&E, the Travel Channel, the Discovery Channel and the Sci-Fi Channel. The home is not currently occupied but holds many guided ghost tours for both daytime and even overnight visits for the ghost lovers and paranormal investigators. Beware though because a waiver is required due to the potential for personal injury but no serious injuries have been reported since the last tenant in 1993. Coming in at number 5 we have South Manitou Island in Leland. South Manitou Island is part of an island chain in Lake Michigan that extends north to the Straits of Mackinac. The only public access is by ferry from Leland, Michigan. The island consists of a ridge of tilted layers of limestone buried under a blanket of glacial debris. 16 miles offshore from the Lilano Peninsula, featuring 300 foot sand dunes, deserted shoreline and empty campground, it's about as terrestrially creepy as you can get in Michigan. In the 1800s the island became a popular harbour for ships traversing the newly built Erie Canal into the Great Lakes and on to Chicago. One local legend surrounds a ship full of passengers stricken with cholera stopped at South Manitou where sailors buried their victims in a mass grave, some of them still alive at the time. Soon after this incident the first appearance of ghosts and hauntings began. The mass grave is believed to be near the old cemetery just north of the bay campground. This is also near where the old dock used to be located. Additionally the passage between mainland Michigan and Manitou is one of the deadliest sections of Lake Michigan. Michigan. This is due to a sudden weather change creating a navigational hazard causing over 50 known shipwrecks. Traffic was quite busy here during the late 1800s and there were frequent accidents where ships would literally run into each other. Off the coast of the island lies the shipwreck of the SS Francisco Morazan where rumours say a young island boy died after trying to explore on his own. There are also two cemeteries on the island and an ancient cedar forest where voices are said to be heard. The haunting of this island island is so bad it has driven park rangers to go mad and demand to be taken off the island. One ranger even confessed to hearing voices, footsteps and slamming of doors inside buildings that were otherwise unoccupied. Coming in at number 4 we have Masonic Temple. With over 16 floors and 1000 rooms this gothic temple is one of the most striking buildings in Detroit. Furthermore this is the largest Masonic temple in the world. According to rumours there are hidden passageways, rooms and staircases so be careful as you might get lost quite quickly within the walls of this temple. The most famous urban myth associated with the temple is that of the architect George D. Mason. Legend has it that Mason went bankrupt funding the construction of the temple. He was going through financial difficulties and was very close to foreclosure. Due to this stress George D. jumped to his death from the roof. This story will back up the fact that many reports of a ghost climb 
the steps to the roof of the building as if stuck in a loop of his darkest moment. Even scarier, additionally guards frequently find the door to the roof unlocked, even when it was just checked moments earlier. Additionally, the temple has various cold spots and doors are reported to close suddenly. One of the roof doors is said to swing open just moments after it is locked by a watchman. Many people report the feeling of being watched while inside of the building. Number 3 on this list is the Kentucky State Penitentiary. We always got to include the creepy jail in one of these lists guys and this is Kentucky's. Virginia Travel Tips says, the Kentucky State Penitentiary is situated near the Tennessee border on a sharp bend in the Cumberland River. In the 1800s, a maximum security jail was built there. It is a gorgeous place from afar but up close it is a death and ghost machine according to a local author and paranormal investigator. Thousands of men have been executed in the prison's electric chair known as Old Sparky. During his death row cell inspections in the late 1980s, a guard had a terrible incident where no one stayed. He was greeted by a prisoner who was reading the Bible. When he returned to his office, he asked about the prisoner's meal, only to discover that no one was in that cell. When he returned to the cell, he discovered that it was empty except for a small Bible on the floor. Yeah, kind of weird. More strange occurrences were recorded around the institution, with many reporting seeing a reflection of an inmate who attempted to shock them. Okay, so honestly guys, I want to take this as seriously as possible, but old Sparky? Like imagine dying in a thing called Old Sparky. Like I think it's meant to electrocute people, but why does the killing chair sound so cute? Kind of sounds like something that you name your dog, not a murder weapon. Anyways, Old Sparky has certainly done its job though, and now the place is super haunted. Most of the prisons we talk about on this channel you can go visit if you like, because they're all typically abandoned. That's not the case with this one though. The Kentucky State Penitentiary is still fully operational and has tons of prisoners in it. Not only do these people have to chill in jail, but it just so happens that their jail is also haunted. Number 2 on this list is Mammoth Cave. So we actually spoke about Mammoth Cave on this channel before in our series about top 5 terrifying caves where evil awaits. So if that interests you, then go check it out. It made that list because it was super haunted and naturally it has to make this one as well. It is, as you'd expect, located in Kentucky. It is the biggest cave in the state by far, which is why it's named Mammoth Cave. Most of the cave has been unexplored, which is kind of nuts considering we've already seen about 400 miles of it up until this point. This has been an area of interest to people for thousands of years. Back 4,000 years ago, it's believed that people used this cave to bury their dead. This was the first encounter this cavern saw of death, but it definitely wasn't the last. After the War of 1812, these caves were sold off and used as a place to mine salt. The workers of these mines were slaves and oftentimes were worked to death down there. After the salt had been mined, this place functioned as a spot for sick tuberculosis victims to go. Obviously, this created more death in this place and just contributed to what is a very haunted area now. Today we get an array of ghostly apparitions popping up to people. Ghosts from all the way back 4,000 years ago have been seen, still lingering and clinging on to this cavern. People have seen the visions of slaves calling out for help and ghosts of sickly individuals as well. H.P. Lovecraft, one of the most famous fantasy horror writers, was inspired by this cave. Anything that inspired that guy is probably a spot that you want to avoid. And finally, number one on this list is Nada Tunnel. What is it about tunnels that's just so creepy? It feels like there are a few locations in the world that seem to attract paranormal activity and tunnels are definitely right up there. Virginia Travel Tip says, Nada Tunnel, also known as the Gateway to Red River Gorge, is located in Powell County, Kentucky. Works of a one-lane tunnel on a two-way road began in 1910 and concluded in 1911. Drills and dynamite were used to rip through the limestone rock during construction and one worker died while attempting to dissolve a stick of frozen dynamite by placing it next to the fire which, you know, resulted in the dynamite exploding. As a result, the man's spirit is claimed to haunt the Kentucky Tunnel. Others allege that the location is haunted as a result of a climber who died in this region. These incidents are linked to the mythology of a green orb appearing in front of the tunnel. If you plan to enter the tunnel, keep in mind that it only fits one automobile at a time, 
Therefore, check for other car headlights before proceeding. This is one of the coolest haunted places in Kentucky for the sake of it being engulfed in nature. So it may look really cool, but the haunted nature of this spot makes me think that it should be avoided. Man, imagine literally getting blown up by a stick of dynamite. Like that might actually be the worst. Granted, my dude did stick the dynamite literally right next to a fire, so I feel like he might have brought this one on himself a little bit. I'm not really sure how the climber would have died in this tunnel, but you gotta imagine that he screwed up if he was climbing in a tunnel. Either way, the spot is definitely riddled with these spirits, and they manifest themselves as this glowing green orb. Now, there haven't been too many reports of this thing being super dangerous, but it is definitely creepy to say the least. Locals don't really travel down this pathway for fear of the orb, and what it could potentially do to them. Also, on a total side note, I just want to bring up the fact that this is a one-way tunnel on a two-lane road. Like, how dangerous is that, guys? What if it's foggy or something and I can't see all the way down the tunnel to the other car? That is literally the dumbest road design I have ever heard of. Maybe the legend was just created by the locals because they know how dangerous this freaking tunnel is. Regardless of what it is, I recommend staying away. In at number five, we have Palmer House Hotel. This hotel is not only considered the most haunted place in Minnesota, but to some, it's considered the most haunted place in America. Located in South Center, the hotel has been visited by paranormal activity investigators from across the country. Recently, the ghost hunter from the Travel Channel, Ghost Adventures, even investigated the hotel. A brothel that went by the name of the Salk Center House occupied the current grounds of the Palmer Hotel, but the Salk Center House burned down in 1900, and the Palmer was built in its place the following year. The Palmer Hotel was established in 1901 and is notorious for its permanent ghost residence. The most reported ghost in the hotel is named Lucy, who resides in room 17. Legend has it that Lucy was an adult worker that frequented the past building of the Salk Center House. Though Lucy endured a terrible accident of losing her life at the hands of one of her clients. Even though this happened in the building, the Palmer Hotel can't seem to get rid of the spirit of Lucy. The ghost of Lucy is said to dislike men by slamming the room door of male guests. Some reports her slamming the room door so hard it rattles the artwork on the wall and aggressively drops the temperature. During a recent investigation, a Chicago ghost hunting outfit allegedly recorded a temperature of negative one degrees Fahrenheit during their stay. Additionally, there was a couple staying at the hotel that reported a horrifying ghost encounter in room 17. Where the wife woke up in the night and suddenly saw a lanky man dressed in 1920s clothing standing at the foot of the bed. Other active areas include the bar in room 22, home to a spirit named Raymond, rumored to be Lucy's manager. One employee of the Palmer House Hotel has confessed that their favorite paranormal experience is when guests complain about how noisy the people above them are, even though they are on the top floor. The ghost encounters and paranormal activity is so frequent at the Palmer Hotel that the current owner, Kelly Freezer, didn't believe in ghosts, but this changed changed when she became the owner of the hotel. In at number 4 we have the Soap Factory. The Soap Factory was at its peak during the soap boom of the 1880s, though now the factory has been left abandoned. The Soap Factory is one of the oldest factories in Minneapolis. While the process of making soap required lots of fats, lie in extremely hot temperatures, therefore it wasn't the most glorious or safest workplace in its day. Furthermore, the fats came from animal carcasses, thousands of them. The flow of blood and skin leaked into the Great River next door and the turn of the century. The building smell of flesh made it the hot spot for stray dogs that the city paid to be rounded up and sent to the end of their life. If that's not creepy enough, there are legends regarding malpractice taking place at the factory, with animal fats from local restaurants taken to be made into soap. And there were also rumors of child labor at the factory, but whatever you choose to believe, there is no denying that the site contains negative energy. Now the basement of the abandoned factory is used for haunted tours. The tour is so scary in fact that guests have to sign a waiver and have to be 18 to go on the tour. Coming in at number 3 we have Doherty Hotel. The Doherty family has owned and operated the hotel since it opened in the 1920s. The Doherty men were and remain the business managers, however as the current owner Jim Doherty tells it, it was the Doherty women who were the heart and soul of the business. The hotel has a colourful history. During prohibition it was a speakeasy 
Lee, a place for backroom gambling and adult entertainment. It was also a meeting place for the Mafia and Purple Gang. Here they worked out their differences. In 1938 the hotel was the site of one of the Michigan's most notorious murders. Asaya Lebo, former Purple Gang attorney turned Purple Gang businessman was murdered in the bar. He was shot by his cousin and business partner Jack Livingston and sadly passed away. Ever since there have been numerous hauntings, some believe it's Lebo who haunts the ground or grandmother Helen Doherty who passed away at the hotel. But there is one thing for sure and it's the many ghost stories that are now associated with the hotel. Guests, visitors, investigators, employees and the owners have all had some kind of paranormal experience at the hotel which includes perfume scent wafting through occasionally, loud knocking, bedroom doors open and closed by themselves and dark apparitions and shadowy figures have been spotted anywhere from the lobby to the top floor. Also the spirits of other murder victims roam the halls, lobbies and rooms while some can be seen, others prefer to just make noise. Coming in at number 2 we have Michigan's first state prison. Established in 1838, Michigan's first state prison remained in operation through 1934. The prison served as the nucleus for the city as it spanned some 20 acres. Over the years it relocated and at one point became the largest walled prison in the world with around 6,000 inmates. In 1952 in response to poor medical care, brutality from the guards and bad food, two maximum security prisoners took hold of a guard and used his keys to release other inmates. A days long riot ensued resulting in 9 guards being held hostage. Additionally the riot resulted in the deaths of several inmates and guards before it was extinguished by the national guard. The inmates fought for and won a list of 11 demands for reform. Today the old prison has become the Armory Arts Village, a residence and studio for local artisans. Apartments are very contemporary and halls are covered with artwork. In spite of its modern renovations and freshly painted walls though, rumours persist of its haunting. Visitors, workers and artists of the space claim some prisoners and guards still haunt their former home. Residual sounds of riots are also frequently reported due to the prison's history of such occurrences. Judy Krasnow, an employee at the renovated arts village, hosts daytime historic tours of the prison, so a visitor can see the hauntings for themselves. She is also a resident of the prison and lives on site. She has confessed she believes her apartment, which was once a series of prison cells, has ghosts. Furthermore, Judy is not the only resident who believes that. Even though the upper floors have undergone renovations, the underground section that holds solitary confinement remains structurally intact. Although cells have been removed, there is intensity in this area that cannot be denied. And finally, in at number one, we have the Whitney Restaurant. Located on Woodward Avenue, Restaurant Whitney was the former mansion home of David Whitney. David was one of the Midwest's wealthiest lumber barons at the turn of the century, and he built this magnificent 21,000 square foot home in 1894. The mansion was restored in the mid 1980s, and since then, reports of unexplained paranormal activities have been reported. Such as shadow figures have been seen on the second floor, disembodied voices have been heard, and other strange phenomena have occurred. It is known that the mansion is haunted by Whitney and his first wife, Flora. Flora always wanted to live in a mansion but died before the home was finished, leaving Whitney to raise their four children. A year after Flora's death, Whitney married her sister Sarah, leaving Flora's ghost to forever live in distress. The paranormal activity within the restaurant is not for the faint hearted, as there have been reports of the elevator travelling between floors on its own with no one inside to operate it. Furthermore, ghosts have been witnessed on the upper floors, with one staff member seeing an older man looking out the window. The staff member approached the man, asking him to leave, and right before the staff's eyes, the man vanishes into the floor. Other reports include noises that sound like silverware and kitchenware being handled and or stacked and table settings keep getting moved around by some unseen presence. The outhouse is said to be the most haunted part of the property. It was originally built for Whitney's slaves and has been largely untouched for years, mostly due to the fear of paranormal. Inside the outhouse is a dining table that is set for the afternoon tea and has been untouched for as long as anyone can remember. Today it is still perfectly set but covered in a thick layer of dust. Adding to the ghostly atmosphere, the outhouse has no electricity, so sits in the darkness at night. A tour guide who once worked at the Whitney insisted that the building was haunted for his experiences working there. The worker claims a group of dolls vanished from a room inside the building. Also, the worker has reported hearing his name being called from an empty area of the building. The Whitney Mansion is an elegant and beautiful property, but has high body counts, a haunting history, and plenty of supernatural sightings still happening today. Coming in at number five, we have Miss Pa Hotel. Name 
Named after the Mizpah mine, the hotel was opened in 1905. The hotel is considered a historic beacon of central Nevada's mining boom that came and went and left behind a trail of ghost towns, and is located between Las Vegas and Reno in Tonopah, Nevada, which has a population of around 2,000. Due to it being originally opened at the height of Tonopah's silver boom, it hosted celebrities and wealthy investors. The famous celebrities that have been linked to the hotel are Howard Hughes, Jack Dempsey and Wyatt Earp. Additionally, at the time it was the tallest building in Nevada and was one of the first luxury hotels in the state. At the time that it was built, it was heralded as a sign of Tonopah's prosperity, as it was displayed on newspaper headlines proudly displayed in the Mizpah during the area. However, over time several accidents and crimes took place on the hotel grounds, making the hotel need to close and reopen several times, most recently in 2011 after being closed and boarded up for 10 years. The hotel is considered haunted and is known for the story of the Lady in Red. The Lady in Red was a high class adult worker who lived in the top floor of the Mizpah. She sadly lost her life at the hands of a man in the hotel by her lover. Her lover wanted her to give up her work for him, though she did not want to do that. Due to the disagreement, she sadly met her fate in the hotel. The room where paranormal activity is most active would be the room where she lost her life, and it's considered the Lady in Red's room. And it is the very room you can now book and stay in on the top floor. There have been reports from guests and staff of the Lady in Red being seen riding the elevator, while other reports of hearing her whisper in the guests and staff ears. Additionally, she is known to leave pearls in the bed of guests that she is fond of. That being said, the Lady in Red is not the only spirit that haunts the hotel as there is a nameless soldier who died in the hotel and unfortunately they never were able to be identified. It has been reported that the soldier haunts the third and fourth floors. Guests have also reported of a force tugging at the back of their shirts and unexplained giggling, while others report the inability to sleep because they felt as if someone was standing next to the bed watching them all night. The Mizpah Hotel has been named the most haunted hotel in America and for a good reason. In at number four we have Goldfield Hotel. Located in Goldfield, Nevada, you'll find the Goldfield Hotel. The hotel opened in 1902 and formed a large crowd of visitors and guests in its early years of operation. In its early years, the Goldfield Hotel was visited by politicians, bankers, and gunslingers. Built in the heart of the town, the Goldfield Hotel was one of the most sought out buildings in Goldfield and was known as the finest hotel between San Francisco and Denver. The man behind the hotel was George Wingfield, a successful and wealthy banker, mining magnate, and joint owner of the booming Goldfield Consolidated Mines Company. However, as with many boom towns, Goldfield's mines eventually dried up, causing the population and stream of hotel guests began to dwindle. The hotel went through a series of owners, from private owners to the US Army during World War II, and now is owned by Red Robert's son. The Goldfield Hotel was once the most spectacular hotel in the state of Nevada, but today operates under a different notion as one of the most haunted places in Nevada, if not the entire United States. The most known ghost story is of a woman named Elizabeth who was speculated to be George Wingfield's mistress. Elizabeth became pregnant with Wingfield's child and to protect his marriage, George paid her to stay away, though he grew fearful that he would get exposed for cheating on his wife. Therefore, George ultimately locked her in room 109 throughout her entire pregnancy. Wingfield fed her food and water to keep her alive until the child was born, but then Elizabeth disappeared altogether and was never to be seen again. Many guests touring the Goldfield Hotel have claimed to see Elizabeth's ghost, and some even claim to hear crying, notably calling out for her child. George's ghost is also said to haunt the hotel, with guests reporting to the lingering smell of cigars and ashes being left on the floor. Those aren't the only ghosts that haunt the Goldfield Hotel, as other spirits of those who lost their lives on the grounds of Goldfield have been reported to be seen lurking in the halls and lobby of the old hotel. In at number three, we have First Avenue. Located in downtown Minneapolis, the building which is now home to this nightclub has a rounded front, is painted black, and has white stars on its side walls with the names of many of the musical talents who have done shows in one of these three event rooms found inside. Before it was famous for being a nightclub, the First Avenue was a Greyhound Depot. The First Avenue legend has to do with the building's former self, the Great Art Deco Greyhound Bus Center that opened on 7th Street in 19. 
1937. The story goes that a young woman went to the station to meet her boyfriend who was returning home from World War II. When she was informed that he had died in combat, she ran into the restroom and ended her life due to heartbreak. In recent years, multiple First Avenue staffers have reported seeing a ghost in the washroom. The ghost has been reportedly described as a woman always in a green army jacket and sometimes seen dancing at the club along with other ghosts. Legend says that many homeless people died in the bus station as well and they can be seen dancing with the women. There have been reports of another spirit haunting the nightclub. The staffers nicknamed this spirit Slippy. While this particular ghost is said to make a balloon appear from nowhere which then floats up and down the staircase on its own. Dave Schrade, a paranormal investigator, visited First Avenue to assess the paranormal activity in the building multiple times and has concluded that the building is indeed haunted by many spirits, indicating that the record room is the most active area of the site. While DJs that have played at the venue have reported frequently hearing strange noises through their headphones such as growls, voices and screams, other performers report their equipment being pushed off stage with no explanation. In at number 2 we have Schmidt Brewery. Schmidt Brewery became the largest in Minnesota by 1860, producing 1200 barrels annually and shipping them as far south as Tennessee. It was restructured as the St. Paul Brewing Company in 1898 before being sold to Jacob Schmidt soon after in 1900. Since its opening in 1884, many ghost hunters have visited the Schmidt Brewery to experience some of the many rumoured paranormal activities. The brewery has been the site of many constant unexplainable instances, from fires to people losing their lives to terrible accidents. This place has seen a lot of scary sights. While the victims of these events linger around to haunt the grounds of the brewery, even though the building is now used as an artist's loft, that doesn't take away the scary history of the Schmidt Brewery. While most of the ghosts that haunt the grounds of the old brewery have to do with ordinary brewery workers dying in terrible accidents, in 1896 two workers lost their lives in an explosion. Furthermore, in 1902 a worker fell down an unmarked elevator shaft. Additionally, in 1904, Matthew Colo, a worker whose job was to light gas lamps in the brewery, lost his life from inhaling flames. Schmidt Brewery has been a St. Paul haunt since 1855 for more than a couple of reasons, when owner Jacob Schmidt took down the original North Star Brewery sign, replacing it with his namesake, Jacob Schmidt Brewing Company. The entire brewery burned down a year later in 1900. Plenty of other bad luck would also follow on the grounds of the brewery, suspected due to the tragic death of many workers of the brewery. And finally, in at number one, we have Four Pals Restaurant. Known as the most haunted restaurant in Minnesota, the Four Pal has a tragic story. Located in St. Paul, Four Pals was a high end restaurant located in Irvine Park, and the restaurant is a beautiful Victorian mansion. Sadly, though, the restaurant is now permanently closed. The dark stories about Four Pals Restaurant hint that the historic mansion is seriously haunted. As the story goes, back in the late 1800s, Joseph Forpau had an affair with the mansion's maid, Molly. It was not long before his wife discovered this relationship and love for Mary. Therefore, the wife became extremely jealous of the servant and assigned Molly to do chores that would keep her away from the bedrooms and away from Joseph. Molly became pregnant and Joseph ended the affair, but Molly was so distraught about the whole situation that she ended her life. According to reports, she ended her life in the attic. Joseph was upset when he heard the news about Molly that he figured he could not stay in the house where his beloved died. One day he went out for a walk and ended his life as well. Since then, restaurant guests and employees have reported creepy sightings of a woman dressed in 1800s attire, lights turning off and on by themselves, and strange noises coming from the attic. In one case, the disturbances were so chaotic that it led to an investigation by the St. Paul police, whose canine dog refused to enter the attic. It is said that Joseph and Molly both haunt four pals, but many guests have said Molly is more active spirit. People say they have seen the two walking around the dining area, but Molly bangs on walls and smashed his glasses. Some people say they can smell her lavender perfume. That being said, Mr. Fourpaw was also sometimes seen and his ghost has been reported wearing a dark waistcoat, silk vest, pinstripe trousers and a derby hat. He can be seen going to the basement at which time the lights flicker and shuffling noises are heard. He roams the house and has been caught on film many times. The former staff of the restaurant have also reported on many occasions when they would go floor by floor turning off lights as they closed down for the night. Then when the staff members get in their cars to leave, they'll notice the top floor light is on. Nevertheless, if the restaurant is haunted, the story of Mr. Fourpow and Molly is one of the most devastating to date. Number 5 on this list is Larnuck Castle. New Zealand isn't like a lot of European countries with tons of castles. In fact, as far as castles go, they hardly have that many at all. That's why it kind of sucks that one of their only ones and one of the most beautiful just has to be haunted. Travel Triangle writes, One of the spookiest places in New Zealand, the Larnuck Castle, is famous for being one of the few castles in the country. The story goes as follows. The castle's ballroom was gifted by Larnuck to his daughter, Katie, on her 21st birthday. 
Unfortunately, she died young due to typhoid cancer. His first two wives also died while in this castle, and he himself took his own life after learning of his son's and his third wife's affair. Later, the castle was also a mental hospital during the World Wars. While Katie is seen swirling in the ballroom, he too has been spotted roaming around the corridors. Instances of people being pushed, touched on the back, and others have all been reported. Well, that is just all kinds of messed up, guys. Why couldn't this have been the last season of Game of Thrones instead of what we did get? We got disease, affairs, multiple wives, people taking their own life, and then on top of all of that, this castle was literally used as a mental hospital during the World Wars. I truly cannot think of a history that would have made a place more haunted than that. Apparently, the ghost of the father who killed himself is often spotted at this location. He'll appear to visitors and will moan and cry to them, seemingly regretting his decision. Some people have also spotted a ghoul-like creature that looks a little bit like the Joker. It's in a straitjacket and has this menacing smile that looks sinister, but also gives you the feeling that this creature isn't in control of its actions. It's really too bad that this is the reality of Larnet Castle, because I looked at some photos and from the outside, it's pretty cool. Even though it looks really nice, I can't in good conscience recommend that you go here though. Number 4 on this list is the Puhini Homestead. This homestead is located in the Howick Historical Village, which was built in 1861, but then moved to where it sits now in 1982. News Hub writes, Over the years, there have been sightings of a woman in white ascending the stairs. Footsteps have been heard from the halls with no one around to make them, and the sound of objects being dragged across the floor has reportedly echoed through the empty walls. Wallbang stayed overnight in the homestead to try and see whatever was going on in the night for himself. He says there was a feeling of being watched, but it didn't make him feel afraid. As the night alone in the old building progressed, there were sounds he couldn't explain. Scuffing sounds and swishes. It's like there's something just around that corner, he wrote in a journal at the time. Hiding or doing something. I'm thinking of a rat, but I can't see one. At around 3 a.m., Wallbank heard a bang as though something had fallen over. Turns out the torch he had set up on a chair upstairs had fallen or been knocked over. Footage shows the torch flying down the stairs as though it had been thrown. But there's no camera on the torch itself, so just how it moved like that is still a mystery. Video footage of the stairs doesn't show much, just a slight shadow maybe. But it's the audio that's odd. Loud noises that sound like a cabinet being dragged across the floor. A series of footsteps and several loud clanking noises similar to that made by a metal bucket. Whenever ghosts or paranormal beings have the ability to move physical objects, the stakes they get raised a lot. Think about it, if that torch just so happened to land on something flammable and Wallbank wasn't there to hear it right away, then that entire house could have gone up with him in it. Ghosts like this are dangerous and have no care for human life. Why this ghost is here, or why they're pissed off at humans is a mystery as well. Maybe if we knew that, then we could at least do something to appease it, but we can't. Once again, this is the case of a spot in New Zealand that, for whatever reason, is just deeply haunted. In at number 3 we have Bobby Spring Ranch. Located just outside the glitz of the Las Vegas Strip sits a plot of land that takes visitors to another time and place. That land is known as the Haunted Bonnie Springs Ranch. Originally built in 1843, the ranch was used as a stopover for the wagon trains going to California. While in 1958 the ranch was renovated and opened to the public as a tourist attraction with stables, a restaurant and a petting zoo. Later a functioning saloon, shops, wax museum, wedding chapel and replica school house were added to the ranch. There is not only one ghost that roams the ranch, as it's known there are multiple spirits that reside at the Bobby Springs. But one of Bonnie Spring Ranch's most commonly cited ghosts is that of a little girl. Her spirit is mostly cited playing in and around the town schoolhouse before suddenly disappearing. The nearby merry-go-round has also been known to turn on its own unexplainably, where many believe it could be the spirit of the little girl playing on the ride. Another active area of Bonnie Springs Ranch for paranormal activity is the Wax Figure Museum. This small tunnel like maze leads guests through a creepy history display, which literally comes to life for some. Many have claimed to witness these wax figurines move on their own and appear as though they are inhaling breath. The ranch's management even had to allegedly nail the displays down as they were moving out of position so frequently. The final and most evil of Bonnie Springs Ranch's hauntings are found within the Opera House. It is here that a darker, more negative energy is present. The spirit takes the form of a dark shadow figure that follows people through the area and has even 
have been captured in photographs disturbing the EVPs have also been caught in this area. In at number 2 we have Nevada's Governor's Mansion. From the outside the Nevada State Governor's Mansion is a grand two story building. While inside on the first floor you'll find the grand entry hall, the reception room and the formal dining room. Though don't let its appearance fool you as there are spirits haunting its grounds. The Governor's Mansion was completed in 1909 and the Governor Denver S. Dickerson was the first governor to occupy the residence. His daughter June is the first and only child ever born in the Governor's Mansion. The mansion is said to be haunted by June and her mother Una. Since their passing in the mansion there has continually been paranormal activity reports in the household. The mansion is said to be haunted because former employees at the mansion have reported hearing cold wind blowing from an antique grandfather clock that also swings open periodically without assistance. Former First Lady Sandy Miller's brother-in-law is said to have seen the apparition of a woman in a white gown. The woman is believed to be Una Dickerson dressed for the mansion's opening in 1909. And finally in at number 1 we have Silver Queen Hotel. Located in Virginia City, Nevada, the Silver Queen Hotel was constructed in 1876. This makes it the oldest hotel in Virginia City. However, the Silver Queen Hotel is known for much more than just being the oldest hotel in Nevada. The main level of the property features an authentic 1870s saloon with one of the largest single piece wooden bar counters and bar backs you'll ever see. The Silver Queen is also a popular destination for weddings as there is a historic chapel on site. Of all of the allegedly haunted places in Nevada, paranormal experts tend to agree that Virginia City as an entire city is the most collectively haunted place in Nevada, especially as staff guests and countless paranormal investigators are certain that ghosts roam the 138 year old property. One of the most active spirits that haunt the hotel is Rosie. Rosie was an adult entertainment worker who dealt business in the Silver Queens. Though during the late 1800s in room 11 Rosie lost her life. Her story remains mysterious but Rosie is said to have never left the Silver Queen making countless appearances in the decades following her passing. Even though the entire hotel is carpeted guests have often reported loud steps on a wooden floor, rattling doorknobs the sound of voices or even the sight of Rosie herself at the top of a long staircase where she has been spotted lingering. Other visitors report on TripAdvisor and Yelp describing the loud noises at night and an unexplainable sense of eeriness. One guest had a more terrifying encounter in the hotel as they described getting chased down the hallway in the middle of the night by a ghost. Number 5 on this list is the Carolina Inn. This inn has actually been voted one of the most haunted in America by a few different lists. The University of North Carolina says the Carolina Inn was built in 1924 and quickly became a popular hotel for visitors and graduates of the university. In 1948, the Carolina Inn's most long lasting guests checked in and apparently never left. Dr. William Jacox was a fun loving man with a witty sense of humor, had recently retired from practicing medicine and decided to make the Carolina Inn his final home. He lived in room 252 for 17 years before his death in 1965. As shared by the Carolina Inn, guests that have stayed in Jacox's old room report being inexplicably locked out of the suite. One time the lock was so stubborn that a workman had to use a ladder to break into the room. Visitors have also noticed strange occurrences such as messy bath mats and previously closed curtains being pulled wide open. Some have encountered the smell of freshly cut flowers despite none being in the room and felt their bodies become strangely cold for no apparent reason. This is only part of the stuff that goes down at this room as well guys. Some people have reported seeing a poorly dressed man approach them looking for an unlocked door and then if they show it to him he runs away screaming. It's thought that this is the ghost of Dr. William Jacox. I don't know why unlocked doors scare this dude so much but anyone who's gonna spend 17 years in this hotel is probably a bit of a weird dude. Unless you want to deal with a crazy old doctor ghost messing with you all vacation, I'd stay at a different inn. Number 4 on this list is the new Hanover County Library. I don't know why guys but something about haunted libraries is just so intriguing to me. Like it just seems so mystical and mysterious I guess. This haunted library is located right in Wilmington. There is a woman that haunts this place who is believed to be a patron. Apparently she used to donate quite generously to this library and in death doesn't want to leave it behind. She isn't the only ghost that walks the halls here and haunts the books. There's a male poltergeist who makes his presence quite known as well. 
He apparently died in a duel that happened here many years ago before this land was turned into a library. Nowadays, these two ghosts make it very hard to do any serious learning or studying considering they haunt the place so much. The woman isn't too bad, she just shows up and looks super creepy, but from my reading, she only actually punishes those who cause harm to the library or make fun of it. Those who come here to learn and to read, she leaves them be for the most part. The man, however, is certainly quite the pest. He often messes with those that come here and makes it very difficult for people to accomplish anything. I love libraries, I think that we should all go to them more often, but maybe just not this one specifically. Number 3 on this list is the Napier Prison. Napier Prison is the oldest jail in the country dating all the way back to 1862. The prison shut down its activities in 1993, but that was after 130 years of reluctant guests staying here and doing enough damage to cause it to become seriously haunted. Like most jails back then, there were some serious injustices that took place here. The prisoners were treated brutally. They could be tortured, beaten, or in some cases even killed. There's an area of the prison called the Hanging Yard, and I think you can probably imagine what happened there based on the name. This prison also housed some of the hardest criminals in New Zealand. Granted, it also housed some people who did some petty crimes too, and some who were even just generally innocent. The dark history and the numerous human rights violations that went down here have left their mark for sure. The first thing that goes is technology. Those who go here say that cell phones stop working, cameras have a hard time capturing images, and if they brought a computer then that's as good as useless. Then you get hit with the shadows. What is a brightly lit room all of a sudden just gets filled with darkness from literally nowhere. How it got there is anyone's guess. And last is the faces. Disembodied faces show up in this dark haze and either speak to visitors or attack them. Sometimes they'll come straight out of the walls and sometimes they'll just appear in front of you. As cool as it would be to talk to a floating head, I don't think I want to risk the mental trauma that I'd have after seeing that, so I recommend avoiding this jail altogether. Number two on this list is Waitomo Caves Hotel. Every country's got one. One hotel that has, through its time of being active, seen one too many tragedies to just be a normal hotel. Some hotels have it worse than others though, and this one is definitely top tier when it comes to hauntings. News Hub says, originally called Waitomo House, the hotel is said to teem with ghostly activity. Bathtubs drip with blood, spirits walk straight through guests, and those brave enough to stay the night could feel something jump on them or pull their bedsheets away. Wallbank told News Hub the stories of the hotels were intense. We heard stories from the people there, even if management didn't admit it, he said. A staff member said that she went into one of the rooms to clean it, and the bathtub was just filled with what she said looked like blood. She ran out to get another person to look, but when they came back, it was completely clear, he said. People just don't make things like that up. Wallbank and his haunted Auckland team, accompanied by the Wellington Strange Occurrences Society, were brave enough to stay the night. They say a slew of uncomfortable experiences followed them. Sinking feelings, like when you go over a bump in the road were felt. A ball of light passed straight through one of the investigators and multiple people felt as though they were being watched. Unexplained whispers were captured using voice recording technology and one of the investigators claimed to have seen a dark shadow streak across a hallway. So this is just a big fat no for me guys. If I'm going to a hotel, then I want to be calm. I want to be relaxed. I want to get to my room and see a nice little chocolate chilling on my pillow with the bed made. I want to order room service and then have one too many mimosas at brunch. What I don't want is to be fearing for my freaking life from some shadow demon. I also like to take the occasional warm bath, and doing so in a pool of blood is not my idea of a relaxing time. I tried to find out why this hotel is this way, like what could have possibly happened to it to cause such a horrible haunting, but there actually wasn't anything. From my research, it doesn't look like anything tragic of major significance occurred here. This place is just generally haunted and just should be avoided at all costs. Number one on this list is Camp Adair. Camp Adair was first established in 1913 and has over 100 acres of land attached to it. It's your typical camp environment and provides a bunch of outdoor and environmental activities for those who want to come and be a part of it. It's a popular location for school trips and overnight stays. Sadly, it was during one of these school trips that a horrible tragedy occurred. There was a group of children who stayed at this camp many years ago. While they were there, something came over their teacher. 
a soft and a very kind man by all accounts totally lost his mind. During the night whilst everyone was asleep, this teacher woke up. Instead of go to the bathroom or get some water like most of us do in the night, he instead decided to kill every single one of the students that were with him before ultimately taking his own life as well. Nobody knows why he did this, what changed in his demeanor to have him commit such an atrocity, but they do know that his ghost has never left. Still as mad as the last day that he was alive, this ghost wanders the grounds now and is in search of another victim. The one super noticeable feature about him is his bright red beard. Whenever students come to this camp, they are immediately told that if they ever see someone with a red beard, just run in the other direction.